Hello, who is out there? Hopefully a few of you are here to join me for the fantastic Hogwarts Microscale Castle. So feel free to say hello if you are in the chat and let me know that you're there. As, as you can see for tonight, I actually have started to build this. First things first. <laughs> oh, hey, Jezza. It's nice to have you here, buddy. Yes, feel free to stop by just for a little bit. That's fine, mate. Hope everything's going well for you. Um, so, yeah, as you can see, I have started to build this. First of all, partly because I just couldn't wait. <laughs> it's very difficult <laughs> for me not to try and build this. Um, but I have only done up to bag seven. And I did want to leave the top open so that we could have a little bit of a tour at the beginning of this and show you where I'm up to. But I also didn't want you guys to, you know, see all the boring bits. So Corn Ace here. Hi, buddy. <laughs> How are you? My lovely son out there in the Lego community. Brett's here. Hi, Brett. How are you? It's great to see you again. Brett and I were in Steve's live stream last night. So it was really good fun streaming with Brett. Um, and then 84 Sky Evo. Yes, we can see your chat. Welcome, welcome. I'm doing really well. I hope that you're well as well. It's lovely to have you all here. So, yeah, it's great that you've decided to come along and see how I'm going with Hogwarts. So, yes, I am up to bag seven. So, in bag number one, we did get Godric Gryffindor. So he looks absolutely fantastic, really beautiful minifig. So really nice, sort of Gryffindor as well. So anyone who is a Gryffindor will have to let me know in the comments, definitely. Uh, how many bags there are? 37 bags. <laughs> so, oh, Lex is here as well. Hi, Lex. How are you going, buddy? It was really funny last night. Lex and I were saying that he has almost finished his Hogwarts or was coming up to possibly his last live stream around his Hogwarts castle. So, um, and I've just started mine. So we were having a little bit of a laugh saying that as one Hogwarts castle is finishing, another Hogwarts castle is starting. So yes. Oh, um, Corne, I am definitely waiting for Rowena as well. I'm also a Ravenclaw. Oh, Lex is a Gryffindor. Excellent. We do have a Gryffindor in the house. I don't know whether or not we've had a Gryffindor in the comments before whenever we've been discussing our Hogwarts houses. So I'll see how I go with my webcam. But as you guys know, it does have a few struggles when it comes to focusing. So obviously this is the front because we do have the boathouse here. So the boathouse looks really cute. So that's really nice looking little boathouse. And when you look at the images, there is an extra part that goes on here. So Lex can definitely let us know about that. Obviously, we've got a lot of the rock work down at the base, more rock work around to this side. We do have our first like little turrety type area here more rock work and then as we go over here we've got that fantastic snake door that leads to the underground area with the basilisk so that's a really nice like little hidden detail around the back i can just see dog fur <laughs> it's stuck under some of the tiles <laughs> and then over here we do actually have the dungeon so we do actually have this like sand green snake which i think is meant to be the basilisk and some other little details down here as well. Um, and then more rock work over this side. And then if I come up here a bit, you guys can then also see how like the guts of it sort of looks. So that's sort of where we're up to so far. So really, yeah, it's a really nice sort of build, really detailed build, obviously. 
you know, we've already got a few nice, like, little iconic elements in this set. So, corn. Oh, Mama's Bricks is here. Hi, Mama's Bricks. It's great to have you here. Really fantastic. Oh, Chamber of Secrets. Yes, Corne. Corne is um, my brain. <laughs> When I live stream, I get really forgetful and Corne helps me out. <laughs> so Corne's moving in a little while and he's going to have a raven claw theme for his room. Fantastic. Oh, my God, with the Diagon Alley set as the central focal piece de resistance. Piece de resistance. So... Yeah, I don't, I don't know why that got left out either, Lex. Obviously, you've already built this, so you're going to have a few more little insights into some of the little weird and wonderful little quirks that quite often we end up with, with each set. And <laughs> Corno is, of course, definitely going to be our sort of main go-to guy when it comes to what we need to figure out about Hogwarts. So, and obviously I've already put this piece together and because we're now going to start building up like the floor for this. So that's why I just wanted to make sure that I left that open so we could sort of have a bit of a look at what was going on on the inside of it all um, before I closed it up because quite often I find that stuff quite interesting. You know, I am a bit of a nerd, so that's probably why I find that stuff interesting. <laughs> and dog fur, fur, yes, dog fur just ends up everywhere all the time. I absolutely love Pucky, as you all know. He is just such a lovely little guy. Um, but he is so furry. I have never encountered a dog that just is as fuzzy as what he is. It's just crazy the amount of fur that comes off him. Like I could literally, you know, knit and stuff a whole new pucky every day with the amount of fur that he sheds. And he's quite little. Like, I mean, he's not, <laughs> he's not a big dog. That's okay, Lex. Pop back if you can, but otherwise enjoy your day. That's all good, mate. Um, yeah, so yeah, pucky's just so furry. So, uh, oh, yes, the microfigs. Let's do those as well. Um, right. All the microfigs seemed to come in the first bag as well. So we'll see if, oh, it is going to focus. So it looks like we have uh, <laughs> Voldemort, he who shall not be named, McGonagall. I think that must be Filch. Um, a random Hufflepuff, a Ravenclaw student. We also have, I'm assuming that the little blonde Ravenclaw must be Luna. And then I think that this must be Neville here. I'm assuming that this is Dean Thomas next. And then we have Dumbledore. Uh, that must be Hermione with the brown hair. And then on my last little brick, we have Ron and Harry. So they're all the like the little micro figs that came in the first bag. Oh, big stretches. And then you can also see that we got five of these like little boats as well which are quite cute, but I don't understand why we needed five. I would have been happy with, like, say, three. Oops, but we got five. <laughs> and I, that keeps happening to me. The little window frame keeps on coming undone from the other little plate bit, but that's okay. Uh, Brickish is here. Hi, Brickish. Oh, hi, Darren. It's so nice to have you in the comments, mate. That's great. So, yes, yeah, so we're up to, this is almost bag seven finished. 
So I did want to start because I, I just thought it might be a bit dull and a bit boring just to watch, you know, putting together like the boring foundation-y type bits and pieces. So I've sort of kicked off um, at this level. So hopefully we'll get to see some sort of more exciting type builds. And hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I can stay focused enough to build what I need to build in quite a detailed way. So yeah, and it was really nice. Um, Legoland Ballarat One was actually streaming with myself and Brett's, Brett's Bricks last night over on Steve's channel, so Steve Reynolds TV. So, <laughs> yeah, which was really cool. It was good fun, lots of good fun. And uh, Lego reused Helga Hufflepuff's face for Molly Weasley. No, I didn't. I didn't realise that. Mind you, I haven't seen um, the minifigs yet. I was looking online to see if I could buy a complete set because I just don't have the strength or the capacity to try and uh, do blind bag feeling and shopping around and whatnot. So hopefully I can find somewhere that's sort of reasonably priced or fairly priced. You know, I don't, I don't mind, you know, supporting someone who's gone out of their way to sort of find it, but I think it does get a little bit ridiculous when they expect loads more cash okay so here we go and then so okay there's a little bit of dutch geography going on there which not all of us will understand but some of the little Dutch viewers will. Oh, Pucky's outside and he's barking. Somebody must be, <laughs> some of my neighbours either must be going out or arriving home. And he always barks at the comings and goings of the neighbourhood, which is fine. I don't mind that. It's just a little bit embarrassing and awkward when it gets a little bit too late in the day. So, yeah. And... Cool. Excellent. Yes. So let's just put the floors on. And um, I think I do know some of your Hogwarts houses. So, oh, Lord of Dragons is here. Hello. <laughs> so lovely to have you here, buddy. <laughs> That's nice that you could join us this week. Yeah, it's great. I was just about to ask who in the comments knows their Hogwarts houses. So, Brett, I think that you've said in the past that you're a Slytherin. Corne and I are both Ravenclaws. Even though Lex has ducked out, he's a Gryffindor. So does anyone know what Hogwarts house they actually are? Let us know in the comments. I'd be really curious to find out who has done the various quizzes that you can do to get sorted into a... <laughs> Um, it is, I went through Pottermore, but I think it's been upgraded and I think it's now called the Wizarding World or something like that, Mama's Bricks. So, but I also think that there are a few like rogue sort of quizzes that you can do where you can sort of possibly get resorted if your heart desires. So at... At my former workplace, I did work with a lot of Gryffindors. There's a whole heap of... Oh, Lord of Dragons, of course you're a Hufflepuff. Hufflepuffs are absolutely lovely people. I think that they're magnificent. So I'm not surprised to hear that you're a Hufflepuff. So, yes. That's uh, good to know. Yes, just stay for as long as you can as well, guys. Don't feel that you have to stay here the whole time. If you've got other bits and pieces to get on with, of course, 
it's always nice that you get to stop in and have a bit of a chat and catch up. But there's never any pressure to stay here for the whole whole seat, whole evening or anything like that. Although I think a lot of the time it's sort of breakfast time to some of you guys or the afternoon, isn't it, I think, depending on if you're in the States or um, in Europe. And I also know that it is sort of the weekend, so of, often people do have little bits and pieces that they need to get on with during their weekends. So, you know, I was lucky. I got most of my chores that I needed to get done all sorted today before, well, obviously because I knew I was streaming. So that was sort of handy. Yeah. Um, yes, Corne. <laughs> the top of the boathouse hasn't arrived yet. So that's what Lex and I were talking about earlier. He did actually say that that comes in a later bag. And I was really sort of a bit confused by that. And I had to um, double check the bag and all of that sort of stuff to make sure that I hadn't stuffed up because obviously there's lots of details in this set as well. So it can be quite easy to sort of go a bit rogue and sort of go off on a bit of a tangent or whatever. Um, but no, I haven't missed it yet. We'll see. If I get to the end of bag 37 and it's still not there, then I've definitely missed it. <laughs> I'll have to go back and see if I can find it. So, yeah. But, um, yeah, I think, I don't know. I don't know why that 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 has been done like that. I think sometimes do, the, do different parts get packed at different locations? Like I think that they might produce different parts in different um, manufacturers or something, I don't know. I'm not that great on understanding the whole Lego process, but I just sort of wondered whether or not that might have been part of it. Okay. So we'll see. We'll see how I go. So what else has been um, going on for you guys? Who's got some sort of lovely little plans for the weekend. Is anyone doing anything nice? How's everyone's week been going? What Lego sets have people gotten this week? What's been going on for you guys? We've got to catch up and find out. I need to find another little curvy plate. And eight, eight, ten. Cool. Cool. So it looks like Darren is sorting mini figs, which is always good. I love that. You had some fantastic minifigs um, that you were showing us yesterday as well, Darren. You've got such a fantastic collection. I really think that you need to be um, posting more on YouTube. I'm such a, a fan when it comes to seeing what other people are doing and all their different designs. And Coralie's um, set that she showed us as well was so fantastic. I really need to find out where you guys post stuff and follow you there, especially if you're not... Um, going to be doing videos or something on YouTube. So let us know about that as well. So, of course, yes. <laughs> so Brett's little, but was it your two-year-old that had their birthday today, Brett? I think so, wasn't it? So you've been at Lego Duplo training today. That's awesome. Make sure that we get those Lego trains in. Got to love a Lego train. Um, yes, that is right. Okay. I've really got to concentrate on building this as well. I'm finding it a lot more challenging to build and talk tonight compared to when I only have to worry about um, friend sets. I mean, yeah, 
friend sets. Um, I don't know whether or not I have done this correctly. <laughs> it's a good thing I've got my brick separator with me. Right. Yes, so that does have a gap. Oh no, that goes on that bit. Okay, right. Some do you guys ever find that the angle that the drawings are in the instruction books are a bit weird that you can't quite tell exactly where a part is meant to go in the set? Like it sometimes I just find it really tricky to tell whether or not it's meant to be flush up against something called one stud back. I don't know whether or not that's just my. Oh, yes, Kuna. How was your city city trip? Lots of fun, lunch, desk organiser. Excellent. Lord of Dragons has got Ninjago sets coming. I think I might have seen a few things about that big castle fortress set. I, like, I mean, I've always really liked the Ninjago sets. I think that that would definitely be a theme that I would collect if I was a multimillionaire because I just I love the fact that there's dragons in Ninjago and I think that their builds are just fantastic. I think that Taishon was building a Ninjago set on his first live stream I couldn't join him live, but I did watch some of the replay, and so that looked really cool. Oh, Emma's Fashion Shop, that's really nice. That's the pale yellow one as well, I think. Bricks and Pieces Basket for the third time. <laughs> that's so good. Oh, yes, if it's been raining, that's perfect Lego building weather, excellent. Dot sorting boxes, beautiful. Preparing to build a 10 by 10 Tatra Technic Lego vehicle. Bricklink parts for once modified. Ooh, excellent. That's very exciting news. That's okay, Brickish. Pop back if you can. We'd love to have you in the chat, but no pressure if you have other bits and pieces that you need to get on with. Yes, I'm very excited to see the progress around mother. Oh, no, hang on. I <laughs> keep going. Oh, dear. <laughs> this is not going to be a highly productive stream, I don't think, tonight. <laughs> so that's going to be really exciting. Um, yeah, that's fantastic. I love it when Bricklink orders arrive. I, I'm still waiting for a few of mine, but I did know that they were going to take a, a bit longer to ship. Um, and the sellers were really nice as well. So they did say, is that okay? We don't mind if you want to cancel your order and all of that sort of thing. And I just went, mm, it should be fine. So hopefully they will get here eventually. One of my parcels does have to come by boat. So that is going to be probably quite a long wait but once again the seller was really lovely and did let me know sort of like the estimated time so hopefully that won't be too bad I know Darren we were talking a little bit about um, post <laughs> last night as well in the stream and how that's been going which will be quite interesting I haven't seen any of the leaked um, images from anything. Um, has anyone else in the chat seen any of the leaked, leaked images that Corne is talking about? I um, yesterday I had intended to do a bit more catching up on everyone's YouTube videos. So every now and again, I do like to sort of sit down and just sort of binge watch um, a lot of the people that I subscribe to and catch up and sometimes I can't watch everything but I do like to try and at least make an effort to watch bits regularly <laughs> if I can. So there were a number of videos that I really wanted to watch today 
well, I had intended to watch them last night, but last night I sort of got carried away with watching Matt's stream from Family Bricks. And then I started watching Steve's stream and then Steve was like, oh, do you want to jump in? So I ended up jumping into that stream, which sort of meant that today I was watching all my videos, which was cool. Like that's obviously all good. It's all part of the hobby and part of the fun. So, yeah. So, which breaks one of the ideas rules that no new pieces will be introduced with sets. And Lex is saying that they've changed the rules. So what's the new piece? Give us the lowdown, you guys that are in the know. That would be quite interesting. I, um, I think I am quite keen to possibly get the Sesame Street set. I did sort of quite like the look of that one when I saw the original idea. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> that's, that's, that, that makes you my son, Corday. If <laughs> you're still watching Sesame Street, I think Sesame Street is brilliant. So I'm all about, I just love all the Sesame Street characters. I think, you know, I grew up with that as well. And I'm not going to say my age, but I'm a lot older than you. And I think that, you know, it would be lovely to be able to have like a fantastic big bird figure. Um, what do you, do you guys know what other figs were getting in that set? I do remember seeing Big Bird. And then I was thinking, was there Bert, Ernie and Elmo or something like that? Is that right? Or have I gone off track again? So, yeah. Oh, Cookie Monster. Oh, my God, I love Cookie Monster. He was always one of my favourites. Obviously, you know, I do love cookies and I just thought that his enthusiasm for his passion was just, you know, unrivaled. <laughs> so, cool. Cookie Monster, Bert, Ernie and Elmo. Are we still getting Big Bird? I'm so sure that I saw Big Bird in there and I hope that we are still getting a Big Bird because Big Bird is just iconic when it comes to Sesame Street. We'd, we'd have to do a Big Bird. Oh, yes, the count. <laughs> oh, B-Fab's here. Hi, B-Fab. <laughs> How are you going, buddy? It's great that you've been able to make it. Hope that you've been having a nice day so far, although I think it's early in the morning for you, isn't it? It's sort of first thing Saturday morning. So, yes, oh, we've got quite a few Count fans as well, Count von Count, yes, another iconic character. So, yes, very exciting. <laughs> So, oh, yeah, I'm really excited if we're going to be getting some really nice minifig parts um, for that set. I was hoping that they would do the minifigs justice because, you know, you'd have to. You'd just have to do that as well. Yes, Lord of Dragons is agreeing with me about Big Bird. We'll have to see. We'll just have to wait and see. But, yeah, that's definitely a set that I'm very keen to get. I think that that would be a really nice thing. <laughs> no, you're, well, you're meant to be here, BFAB. You know, everyone knows that. You know, work's fine and all, but, you know, hanging out on stream with us is just loads more fun. You know, where else are you going to get great conversation about, you know, the importance of Big Bird and the Count in Lego idea sets? <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it, you've got to be, you've got to be here. Hang out with us. It's all good. So, yes, I'm, I'm excited to hear that we're starting to get leaked pictures of that set, though. So um, hopefully that might mean that we will be getting um, that set soonish then, which would be wonderful. Um, what other sets were we getting in this round? Was Seinfeld in this round or have I missed that one? I seem to just be quite sort of not up with any of the news. I rely on all of you you guys to keep me in the loop when it comes to these sorts of things because you're much better at keeping up with all the news and the goss than what I am. Stuck over here in the middle of nowhere, Australia. So, 
Oh, so you guys have had different characters. Oh, but well, oh, but mate, well, is that well? Well, that might be international, or it might just be our age difference. I'm I'm not sure. When I was growing up, we didn't have Elmo. So Elmo sort of came about when I was like in high school, not to give too much of my age away, but yeah, he wasn't there yet. B Fab saying Seinfeld. Oh yeah, Home Alone. That's that's right. I keep forgetting about that set. Um, does anyone in the chat is anyone in the chat going to be getting that set? I don't think that I will be getting the Home Alone set. But it does look really nice. So it would be great to see somebody else's video on it. <laughs> somebody else can put in all the financial debt to buy that set and build it. And I definitely want to check it out. So that's cool. I wonder if um, Lego Lemaniac is going to build the typewriter. I know he got the piano and he did such an amazing uh, video on that piano review as well. I really enjoyed his video. So it will be nice to see if we would have that. So Home Alone, no idea. Oh, my gosh. 35 sets. <laughs> 96. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're being very flattering, BFAB. I, I love the fact that you're guessing me at a younger age than what I actually am. <laughs> Dragon and Sheep as main characters. Oh, cool. Oh, okay. So, yeah, Sesame Street must be different internationally. I, I can't think that when I was growing up we actually had like specific Australian characters but um yeah it's maybe maybe we did I don't know we'll have to see home alone before Christmas would definitely make more sense oh Lex is back hi Lex how you doing buddy I've just got to let Pucky back in he's barking <laughs> Right, Pucky's back, back inside. He's done all his duties on patrol outdoors, which is good. So it's made sure that I'm staying safe and the neighbours aren't getting too rambunctious. <laughs> so that's all good. So, yeah, I, I um, beef fab. I think you and Matt were talking about some of the sets that were coming up for this round as well, weren't you, in the stream last night? And there are loads, which is fantastic. It's also going to be interesting to see how many idea sets LEGO will actually end up releasing at a time. So... So, Marvin... Yes, um, Marvin, Harry, so that, were they the burglars? I'm assuming they must have been like the burglars or the kidnappers or or however that sort of storyline went. Oh, I think that that's so lovely as well. Yes, that definitely makes sense now. So, yes. Oh, fantastic. So, yeah. So, um, Lex, will you be streaming that? I'm assuming that you'll be doing the stream for the last little bit of your build, which would be really cool to see. Um, I will probably be um, asleep, <laughs> so I'll miss that. But possibly some of the other guys in the stream, if they're still around and are happy to chill out and watch your stream, would be quite funny actually to see um, where I get up to today and where you start off with. <laughs> so people may get to see a significant proportion of Hogwarts built today by two different builders, <laughs> two different countries. <laughs> but that would be awesome. Yes, cool. So Marv and Harry were the burglars. 
Lex is going to be streaming, so 1am for me, yes, that might be a little bit late for me. I'll see, though, sometimes I do try and catch, I might still be up. It will just depend on how long it will take me to sort out my life after I finish streaming <laughs> and get myself to bed. And it is Saturday here, so I could stay up a little bit later on a Saturday night, I guess. We'll see. We'll see how we go. Uh, the collab between Lego Dots and Levi's. I haven't looked into it loads, but it was quite nice because when I was watching uh, Matt's stream yesterday, uh, BFab and Matt were talking a bit about that and Matt even pulled up some photos on the stream and that was the first time that I'd seen the Levi's stuff. I had seen the... Uh, Adidas trainers like the sneakers which I don't mind the look of the sneakers but to be perfectly honest the primary colors aren't really my thing like you know if it was purples pinks and, and blue like a bit more of the friends colors then I might consider getting the trainers but I usually like the um, Adidas sneakers that are a bit more like streetwear sneakers rather than actual like athletic wear I'm not that athletic, you know, and you don't need super fancy shoes in order to walk the dog. Um, but the the Levi's thing, I just, I find it, I don't know, I just find it a little bit odd. I don't know whether or not I can see that it's that fashionable and I don't really think that they've sort of steered into the geek culture of, like, Lego enough to make it, so that it's sort of like a bit tongue in cheek. So yeah, I don't I don't quite know what to make of the Levi's thing. Admittedly, the photos that we were looking at yesterday on the stream were a bit fuzzy, which is fine. But like I just sort of went out of all of it. I didn't mind the look of the beanie. That's probably the only thing. But yellow isn't really my colour. So I can't really imagine putting on a yellow beanie without making it look like I'm quite ill. So I think it's going to be a little bit more limited. So, yeah, it, it, it is sort of quite strange, really, that the, the clabs are sort of coming at us quite thick and fast. So it sort of seems like this year is the year of the collaboration, doesn't it? And I just sort of go, how much money are they trying to get out of us? Like, seriously. Um, I, can see, I can see the idea behind the IKEA boxes. I just sort of go Scandinavian brands that have an international reputation. I know, you know... Um, IKEA has always done like affordable stuff that has been quite innovative for kids' rooms and that sort of thing. So, um, and, you know, I don't think that the IKEA boxes are that useful for AFOLs, but they're not made for us. Do you know what I mean? Like it's not, it's not that sort of um, idea. Like they're not selling the IKEA storage Lego collab boxes in part of like the adult storage world it's in the kids section so it's meant to be for kids lego obviously um so yeah that i that i can sort of understand and yeah and bfab that's the kind of thing like i just sort of go the primary colors for me are just i don't think that like i mean i don't own any shoes that are sort of like blue red yellow and green with white so, you know, I just sort of go, I just find that a bit strange. Like I just, it's a bit much. Like I just sort of go, it probably would have been better just to go with white, black, red and yellow, like the iconic Lego colours. <laughs> oh, that's okay, Lord of Dragons. Yes, go and enjoy having fun with your guests and your mates. Have a lovely day. It was great that you were able to stop by, though, for a little bit. Give us some insights into what's going on with Sesame Street in Poland. And so enjoy the rest of your day, mate. Yeah. 
And yeah, so I just sort of go, hmm, not really for me. And um, yeah, it's interesting. It's just interesting to sort of see some of that stuff that's been going on with the with the Lego um, apparel sort of side of things. I don't know. I don't, yeah. And I obviously, you know, as a 96-year-old elderly lady, the trainers probably aren't really made for me. Like I'm not going to be their target market for the sneakers. So, you know, if I don't like them, Lego probably don't really care about my opinion in any great detail. Um, but I still just am a bit curious as to who the trainers are actually for then, you know, what trendy person is actually going to be wearing the sneakers outside of me. Yeah, yeah. And that's how I feel sort of mama's bricks. Like I just sort of go, you know, I don't think that all the Lego stuff necessarily has to be like a fall friendly. You know, it's nice. It's nice when it is and it's nice when we can share it across age groups, but you know, um, I don't think that it is for everyone. Yes, I can see that a 17 year old would definitely be a lot more suited <laughs> to, to be wearing the trainers than me. <laughs> so I can see that. Oh, hang on. <laughs> now I'm having logistical issues getting my what benches in place. Come on. <laughs> Your mum calls you trendy. Love it. <laughs> yeah. So. And again, I just sort of go, I, I, I do think that fashion fashion is sort of does quite depend on where you live as well like i know that um you know even in australia what people wear on the west coast and what people wear on the east coast is quite different and even when i lived in the uk what was sort of considered acceptable and appropriate to wear in london is just not clothes that would ever be worn in australia Oh, okay. Oh, a Lego backpack. I don't know whether or not I saw the backpack. Okay, Coronate, come on, let's, you've got to spit some facts. Tell us some facts about Hogwarts. We need to know. I have started to read the books, so I haven't read the books before, and I'm about three quarters of the way through The Philosopher's Stone, so I'm getting there. I don't read every night because sometimes it hurts my eyes because I'm an old person. <laughs> oh, dear. I don't know. I don't... Have I missed this part from somewhere? I think this was meant to be somewhere. Okay, I'll put it to one side and come back to it if I can ever figure it out. Lex, you've got to keep an eye on me, buddy, if you're in the chat. <laughs> well, we do take quite a few of our fashion cues from you, Lee Fab. So, you know, when I think fashion, I think B Fab. That's the way that it goes. <laughs> and I think that. The, the comment between BFAB and Cornet are all just making so much more sense now. <laughs> I think that Cornet is more than happy <laughs> to be getting the trendy shoes. <laughs> and not to be worrying about how many ladies that's, that's attracting. I must admit, though, I, I would think that the, the trainers would actually be quite nice on kids. I think that, you know, if someone was like eight, nine or ten, wearing those sneakers would actually look really cute on them. And Cornet, if 
if and when you get your Lego stuff, you'll have to post a photo on, on Instagram and tag me in it, or at least DM me a photo so I can see it. You don't have to show your face on Instagram if you don't want to. That's all fine because internet cyber safety is very important. But I think it would be nice even if we just got like a, a foot photo. Mm, that sounds a bit weird as well. Not like that. <laughs> a sneaker photo. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, I know. I honestly, Jezza, I, I, I think I desperately need to go and get glasses, but I am just in denial. I just don't even want to admit to myself that I need to wear glasses. I just am ignoring that as an issue altogether. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to be one of those old people that are just going to live in denial just pretend that everything's fine but I do also notice that when I'm not working so when I'm on holidays and I'm not looking at my computer screen as often is that then my eyes tend to be a lot better so um, I just blame modern technology for that hi Amy <laughs> it's great that you're here yes it will depend on on that. <laughs> BFAB, we've spoken about this. You're allowed to put yourself down on other people's streams, just not on mine. You are magnificent and wonderful when you come into the Adora Build world. No self-depreciating humour is allowed on my stream. Um, you haven't missed much. I know that it looks like you, you've missed a bit more, Amy, but I did actually build up bags one to seven today before I started the stream because it's all just like the boring foundation stuff. So I'm now on bag number eight, which is very slow going because talking and building something that's this detailed not going particularly well for me tonight but it's lovely I like building and chatting I've just had to take parts out and I've sort of got a bit lost in a few places so I'm glad that uh, Lex is back in the chat um, to keep keep an eye on me which is good he can make sure that I don't go too astray um, okay oh gosh Okay, right. Mm. Okay. Right. So. <laughs> I'm only going to read the beginning of that sentence, B Fab, which is you're a ten. Full stop. So, yes, I um, always loved it in the films when they had the, um, the ceiling that would change. So we had the ceiling that looked like the Starry Night, which was just absolutely beautiful. Loved it. Um, I also thought, yes, it was big enough to hold all the students. And when I was watching, like, some of the behind the scenes on my Harry Potter DVDs, because I'm an old lady and have DVDs, um, they did say that the set in the films, I think, would only hold about half the Hogwarts students, but they couldn't make it large enough to hold all of them. I think that that's what was said. Feel free to correct me, anyone in the comments. I think there are people in the comments that have actually been to, you know, some of the Hogwarts locations in the world. 
So you guys may know better than me, who has always just been stuck in a little funny outback Australia of Perth. And let us know. So, oh, Amy and BFAB, um, do you guys know what Hogwarts houses you're with? Have I asked you that before, Amy? Anybody else in the comments, if you know what Hogwarts house you're with, let us know. I'm just curious. Oh, hello, Digital Magazine. How are you going, buddy? It's great that you're here. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm just trying to do my best to build this up, but it's very slow going for me tonight. I'm struggling with <laughs> being able to concentrate on what's going on. It's a very detailed set. <laughs> oh, Amy, you're a Hufflepuff as well. That's awesome. I'm actually a Ravenclaw, but we do have a couple of Hufflepuffs in the stream, which is lovely. And uh, I always think that Hufflepuffs are the loveliest people. I've never met a Hufflepuff that I haven't liked. They're just fantastic. And I just think that Rowena, oh, no, Helga Hufflepuff's philosophy on students joining Hogwarts and all of that sort of stuff is just absolutely beautiful. I just think that she's such an amazing and inspiring person to sort of be really willing to fight for, you know, um, it you know, basis on sort of talent and, you know, being able to accept everyone and non-judgmental sort of attitudes and all of that stuff is just an awesome thing to include. Um. <laughs> so that's good. BFAB house. Well, that's sounding very Slytherin BFAB, I must admit. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I really enjoyed taking the little Pottermore quiz and finding out about all my different little um, Harry Potter stuff. I got, I know that my Patronus is also a red squirrel, which I think is very fitting, particularly for tonight. I just can't seem to focus on it very much tonight at all. So a, a very, very fitting. <laughs> Patronus, full of distractions, right. Looks like it is time to put in the stained glass windows, which is going to be really interesting. Okay. So what else has been happening? Um, I think... There, there was a bit of chat yesterday, it wasn't near BFAB, about the whole um, lightsaber stuff as well, wasn't there, to do with the giveaway, um, to do with the Star Wars set. So I sort of found that quite interesting. I also watched CC's video as well, so that was sort of quite good to find out a bit more goss around what's happening with that. It's always interesting to have a bit of information around what's happening with some of the other themes and some of the other sets as well. So that's good. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I did really like the bracelet mega pack. I got that one, obviously, because I've got all the dots set so far. Um, but the thing that I didn't like about that set, unlike the single bracelets, was that there was no guarantee that you would get all the tiles. So I actually didn't get one of the special magical secret tiles of the five coloured love hearts, the, the best friends forever sort of tile. So I did actually have to order those off Bricklink. So to make sure that I actually got one of those, which was cool but expensive <laughs> oh and you've got all the cmfs now oh that's so nice amy i'm so glad that you managed to find them all i was just saying earlier in the stream that i was having a look over here earlier to see if i could just get all 
together, like just by um, the whole set from like a second supplier, <laughs> like off eBay or Bricklink or something. So maybe that's something that I will be doing this week. It is pay week this week, so we'll see whether or not, we'll see what Lego I actually get this week <laughs> because I did go a little bit bonkers the last few weeks by ordering a few of these larger sets. Well, the last month I've gone completely bananas when it comes to purchasing Lego, so we'll see whether or not I need to be a responsible adult at any point in the near future or whether or not I can continue to just enjoy my Lego passion and see how things go. Yeah, see, I, I think I got one panda one originally and then I had to get, oh, no, I think I got two pandas to start with because I was able to put pandas on one of my, on the sort of spring green coloured bracelet. But I, um, but yeah, it was, yeah, that was the thing that I sort of, that was the thing that I found frustrating about the mega pack. It would have been nicer just to know that we would have been able to get some, like the specific tiles. But I guess that Lego does what it does in order to make money, not to, which they did. Because <laughs> I did buy more Lego. So it worked. So, yeah. Um, do we know yet if we're getting any more dots in the future? Has anyone, have we heard anything about that? Or have we not heard, do we not know yet? Is there no news on that front? Usually we get all the friends and the dots and the princess news last, though, it seems. We're not as gossip thirsty with some of the other themes who love having all that news early because it would be cute oh, I am curious to see whether or not they'll be doing more bracelets or whether or not what they'll be doing <laughs> yeah that's my logic as well Jezza <laughs> I tend to just end up focusing on, oh, well, if I have to pay for shipping, then I might as well do one big order and then it, you know, it works out to be more economical, particularly if I have to do the order like um, I've lost words today. I just can't seem to get my words out, especially if I have to do like an, an order for like from Europe. So either if I'm ordering something from the States, although the postage from the States usually isn't too bad, postage here in Australia is super expensive usually, um, but postage from the States isn't that much more expensive than postage within Australia. But if I'm getting something from Europe, then I usually try and, like, do a massive bulk order um, in order to make it worthwhile. <laughs> That's my logic. <laughs> You know, so we'll see. I don't think that's very logical at all, but we'll go with that. We'll go with that because that's what makes me feel less financially irresponsible. <laughs> but it is it is good. So there's no news that Dots is going anywhere. So they will be around in the future. We just don't know what we'll be getting Yeah. So we'll see. We'll have to wait and see what happens. But that's okay. It would be nice to get a few more bits of dots. So that's exciting. Okay. And what else are we looking forward to? Has anyone purchased any of the advent calendars yet? Who's going to be doing um, videos and reviews on any of those on their channels? Oh, and, um, yeah, BFAB knows dots will continue in 21. Cool. BFAB's usually up with the goss pretty pretty well, so that's good. That's good to hear. We just don't know what they'll look like. Yeah, um, 
And hidden side's going away, which is quite surprising as well. I thought that hidden side would be around in 2021 and sort of do at least another wave or two. I sort of thought, I didn't think that it was going to be around forever. Like I didn't think that it was going to be like city, but I thought that they would at least do like four or five waves, not three, which is a bit light on, I think. Um, but the other thing that's been a little bit annoying is that I had actually gotten a lot of the, well, I've gotten all of the hidden side stuff so far. Um, and then when I was looking to get the most recent wave is that a lot of it sold out. So obviously all the cheeky people have gone in and bought that early because it's going to be sold out. But that just seems a bit frustrating. I think that there is still low levels of stock around at a few, a few of our stores. I think my most, my closest Kmart still has some. So, again, I might go and pick up the three sets that they've got there. I'm pretty sure that the submarine is going to be really difficult to find because that was like $19 in Australia, which is a super cheap Lego set. So I think that even if people weren't fans of the hidden side, they might have picked that one up for birthday parties or whatever because it was actually affordable. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I'll... And then I'm also pretty sure that over here the haunted house for the hidden side stuff, um, whatever that's called, not like the fairground, not like the creator expert one, but the, the hidden side haunted house thing is only available at the Lego store. So that's the other thing that's going to be a bit tricky. But the Harry Potter students accessory pack is only available for me at the Lego shop online store and that's been listed as coming soon in Australia for ages, for weeks and weeks. So um, not yet going to buy the Friends one. Okay, so Mum's Bricks is going to get the Friends advent calendar, maybe not Harry Potter. Hidden side set sold horribly, again, which was really surprising for me because I actually really enjoyed building them. Um, I think for me it was one of those sets that I saw and I think that it had been around probably for about five or six months and I was able to get the whole way. And it might have even also been when one of the shops had a 20% off Lego sale. And it was sort of like I went... You know, I'll just grab these for something to build, but I really enjoy building them. I thought, you know, the lighthouse was a really cool build. Um, the shrimp boat, that was a really cool build. The shrimp shack was a really cool build. The school was a really nice build. And I think the school would be really an interesting set to be able to modify as well. So I think that that would be kind of cool. Yes. Corne, you and I feel the same way about superhero girls. Like, I think, what did you say? That that only had two ways and then it was gone? But the same thing happened with Whiskerhaven as well because there's so many Whiskerhaven um, characters and we only really got, you know, five, I think, didn't we? Five or six. So, yeah. And then, oh, how exciting. Yes, well, we'll definitely keep an eye out for that, Jezza. That sounds awesome, mate. I um, absolutely had, um, had so much fun building the little Adora bike that you sent over. So if anyone in the chat hasn't checked out Jeremy's channel, Rogue Transformations, and you do love seeing custom builds, definitely go and have a look at it. I highly recommend it. I came across it quite a few months ago, like ages ago, and I ended up like binge watching all of Jezza's videos in like the space of a day or two over a weekend. And it is pretty much the complete opposite to what I build. 
but just such fantastic detail and just like really lovely designs and builds and everything. So, yeah, I'll be really keen to see to see that, which is fantastic. So that's really exciting. I'm glad to hear that you're going to do something a bit Christmassy. I think that the world needs a bit more sort of cheer going on, don't we? Something a bit positive and uplifting, which will be really lovely. And, yeah, I agree. I think that um, it would have been nice to, oops, it would have been nice to have seen an extra wave. Um, I really liked the characters as well. I thought that they were really well done and, you know, I've spoken about it before as well. I've, got, I've gotten all of the sets with that and I even ended up with a few double-ups for the DC Superhero Girls as well. Right. Okay. Next bit of the castle. So in anybody else in the chat, has there been a theme that you would like to see return? So has there been a Lego theme where it came out, it was only around for a little while and then it sort of disappeared and you'd like to sort of go, oh, it would be really great to get that back. Let me know in the comments and then we can have a bit of a chit chat about that. It would be great. Great to have a bit more of an idea. Yeah, I yeah, I st I'm still, you know, baffled that DC Superhero Girls got cancelled. I really enjoyed that. Um, and probably if I had to prove if I had to choose a theme to bring back, it would probably be the elves. Because I know that you'd pick DC Superhero Girls Corno, so I'd get both. <laughs> But my sort of pick would probably be the Elves sets. I absolutely loved them. And I just thought it was such a shame that more people didn't see the brilliance of them until it was sort of like on its last legs. Her mama's bricks have gone for Elves as well. Yes, we're fellow Elves fanatics. <laughs> Castle, yes, I think Castle is such a popular theme and I can completely understand that. I am... Um, you know, one of the other things that I absolutely love to do outside of Lego is watch historical documentaries and, you know, the medieval time period is just such a fascinating time period in history and I just think that having, you know, some sort of castle sets would be absolutely magnificent um, and there's just such a passion for it as well and I've seen so many brilliant, you know, um, custom builds around castles as well and I think that there can be so much done within that sort of genre and that theme particularly when you know we do have the opportunity to then do things like um you know have dragons and the knights of the round table and all of that sort of stuff I think would be absolutely brilliant so Trains. <laughs> yes, I have just found my absolute passion for trains, although you'll probably, Brett, you'll probably want to kill me, but I still actually haven't powered up my Disney train. I've just got to get over to my Lego room. To be fair, it is not at home. It is actually at a family member's house. They've lent me their spare room for my Lego room. And um, so I've just got to try and find the time to pop over there and actually put the batteries in and connect it to my phone and get all of that sort of stuff up and running. So I think that steam trains would be great because what's that lovely uh, green train? I know that Mark has one in his city, the one that everyone absolutely loves and it was only around for a very short time and it's like dark green and it's like a steam engine train and it's just absolutely beautiful. So, yes. <laughs> I do agree with you, Corne, as well, is that I think that the expressions um, that were used on the uh, DC superhero mini dolls were really fantastic. I think that that just took 
um, mini dolls in a bit of a different direction, which was really exciting to see. You know, I, like me, you and I both agree that um, Poison Ivy is just such a fantastic mini doll. She's absolutely beautiful. But even Calypso, you know, with the purple half and half face is just stunning and those sorts of things as well. So, yes. Oh, yes, definitely. Emerald Knight, that's the one. Emerald Knight, yes. <laughs> Yes, that's such a beautiful train. Uh, every time I see that train in anyone's video, I just think that's just gorgeous. Um, I think that, that was also one of the reasons why I initially was a bit more inspired to buy the Hogwarts Express because I hadn't intended to get as much Harry Potter Lego as what I've ended up with, I say, as I'm building a massive Harry Potter set. <laughs> oh, dear, yes. So, yeah, I'd love to see, like, the Emerald Knight. I think that that's great. Yes, I definitely think that the um, the Winter Train is the, definitely also such a beautiful train as well. I had hoped that I might have been able to pick that up here. Um, and it is listed as temporarily out of stock, but I also know that that is definitely being retired. So we'll see whether or not it is actually temporarily or permanently out of stock in our Australian Lego store. If it does come into stock, I might grab it, but it will depend on whether or not I'm in the right place at the right time to score that one. And Darren has said, Farrah's Quest and Adventures theme. Yes. I think that there's some brilliant stuff. I don't know that theme very well and I haven't seen all those sets in huge amounts of detail. Um, but I have seen a few different people who have put them into their like um, different cities and they've been able to find, you know, their old childhood sets and build them up. I know that... Uh, Jacob from the Brick Bakery, he had a few that he sort of built. Yep, Mama's Bricks, that's okay, mate. If you make it back, you make it back. But I also understand that today is Saturday for people, so you don't have to stick around forever. <laughs> that's cool. So, yeah, I, I just think that, you know, definitely those sets. I think that um, what's the character called... Um, from some of those adventure sets that um, he sort of Indiana Jones but not really Indiana Jones and he was like the Lego version of that and I'm pretty sure that he was out in one of the more recent CMF series as well, wasn't he? I don't really collect many of the CMF series so I'm not always fully versed in people or minifigures. <laughs> I was going to say people outside of mini dolls. No, Ruth, they're just toys. They're not actual people. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, the white passenger train, because that was your first train, was that, Brad? Oh, that's fantastic. I think it's funny how things like that happen because what have I got? I've got the Hogwarts Express. I do have the Hidden Side train as well, and I do know, Brett, you've got a talk to me about powering that up at some stage or another, but that's sort of lower down on my list of priorities at the moment. Oh, um, but, yes, it would be great to get your import once I'm ready to do that. Um, and, and then, of course, the Disney train as well. So I've now got three. And, again, if I can, we'll see, no guarantees, but if I can find the little uh, holiday tra or Christmas train, then I might get that one as well. But I don't think that I can afford to get that if it's at extortionate prices that some of the retired sets end up as. The tan. Oh, these are the tan. Oh, yes, they're the steps up to the courtyard. Yeah, they look great, don't they? Johnny Thunder. Yes, of course, Darren. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> such a fantastic name 
I do tend to just have such a um, blank mind when I'm doing my live streaming. My mind just goes completely blank and poor Corne usually has to tell use use his words to tell me what's going on. <laughs> so yes. Hopefully I will get better. I think I have gotten less nervous doing live streams over the past few weeks and I do absolutely love chatting to you guys. It is, you know, such joy. I do absolutely love it. I um, well, that's one of the re well, that's the reason why I've just decided to go um, into weekly live streams. So I initially had planned just to do fortnightly, so every two weeks. Um, but yeah, no, I'm loving it so much, and talking to you guys is just so much fun. Absolutely adore it. So, yeah, so I will be going weekly, although I think in a few weeks' time I do have a friend's hens do coming up. So it is supposed to only be in the afternoon, but it may end up dragging on a bit, so I'm not too sure whether or not I'll give that week a miss, but I might try and post a video instead that week. So um, hopefully that will be good enough, which will be lovely. You got poison ivy from a mini fig bag. <laughs> yes, because I think that they did do a lot of the same characters from the DC. Well, obviously they do the DC superhero character. So um, the there was actually, a, I don't know whether or not you know this, Brett, but there was actually a theme a few years ago. Um, was it 2015 or 2016? Possibly something like that where they actually did a whole theme of DC superhero girls and it was all, um, we got Batgirl, we got Wonder Woman, um, we got Supergirl. It was absolutely like so much fun. Bumblebee and we got uh, a few of the villains, Poison Ivy sort of included although, and Harley Quinn as well and they were all sort of mini dolls which was really fantastic. <laughs> yes, I love you too, Corno. It's great. <laughs> yes, Brett, me too. I, you know, for all the times that I do get a little bit nervous and, you know, all of that sort of stuff is that it has honestly I'll keep I'll say this in every thank you video and I do have another thank you video to make because I've just gone over 400 subs but um yeah you guys have just changed my life for the best so it's just been amazing I absolutely love you know spending time on YouTube and chatting to you all it's just been absolutely brilliant yeah 2017 yes so that's when the DC Superhero Girls line was out. I knew it was sort of around then. But, you know, as I'm 175 years old, I do get a bit muddled now and again. <laughs> right. I'm just trying to make sure that I haven't gone too far astray with this. Oh, yes, I have gone slightly askew. Um, right. So, yeah, I just think, you know, it's sort of quite funny really, isn't it? Like um, even last night, Brett, when we were streaming with Steve, it's so much fun to think that, you know, there were a few people from the east coast of Australia, Darren included, me over on the west coast of Australia, you from the UK, Hayes Brooks stopped by from the States. And I just think that it's so nice that, you know, all of us just share this common you know joy and and fun for a hobby and that we can just sort of sit back and enjoy chatting about what's been happening and keep connected and support each other and all of those sorts of things and I just sort of go you know it's absolutely fantastic and you know it's also really nice when we have you know new people to the community or hi Lego girl how are you going mate that's so nice that you've been able to stop by and say hello and it's 
you know, so nice that when we have like newer members to the community, you know, like yourself, Brett, that, um, you know, we get a warm welcome. Like I was so nervous when I posted my first few videos and I didn't know what, how that was going to go. And, you know, Amy, who might still be in the chat, she was one of my first subscribers and, you know, we've been chatting now for almost two years over YouTube about, you know, this little hobby that we, we love. And I just think that that's so awesome. It's just sort of great that we all come from different places and spaces, but just sort of seem to, you know, be able to kick back and enjoy what, what's going on in the Lego world. Mm. What? Okay. Okay, that's looking good. Um, right, okay. Oh, that's a good question, Amy. Pick a movie to turn into a Lego set. Oh, my gosh, especially if it hasn't been done before. That would be fantastic. Um, there are a few that I would absolutely love to see and I think one of those for me would be... <laughs> um, I can't remember the name of the movie, of course. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, I'll have to have a look. Okay, yep, it's come back to me and I can't believe that I forgot the name of it. But I think one of the films that I would absolutely love to see be made into a Lego set, and I don't know how it would be done, would be Zootopia. I just love that film with the little, whoops, with the little rabbit and the little fox. I think that that would be so cool. So that would be amazing. Yes. Yeah, Brett, it's just amazing. I know I'm not particularly great in front of the camera, but I've been trying to get a bit better and I just sort of go bit by bit. It's okay, little by little. Both of us were sort of did a bit of a face during the live stream. <laughs> but that's not really my favourite bit either. Um, but it is nice. I do, I do understand why people sort of want to see what I look like because it's sort of easier to connect with someone that way. But... Yeah, I don't think that we should probably be as worried as what we are. Yeah, yes, Amy, it will be two years. Yeah, it's two years sort of now-ish, I think, because I'm pretty sure I started posting videos like mid-September. So, yeah, two years, which has been lovely. Like, you know, honestly, it's just been so cool and so much fun and I absolutely love it. So, yes. Ready Player One. <laughs> okay. Live action Mulan. Yes, please. Oh, yes. Lego Girl. We definitely need a Pocahontas. That would be fantastic. Love that. <laughs> Yes, lots of good suggestions there. Is there a statue next to Great Hall doors? That is the Hogwarts architect. It guards the Great Hall. Yeah. Oh, cool. Hmm. That's good to know. Yes, that 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 little figure is there. Um, right. And then I think this one goes here. Okay, 
Right. I'm trying very hard to concentrate on building this. <laughs> but in a good way, definitely in a good way. Yes. So, yeah, I think what I think Merida, I think might be one of my, it's definitely within the first 10 videos that I ever posted. Um, I know that Jasmine was my first and I think that the cherry trees were third. I think Merida's Castle might be somewhere in there at about my fifth video, something like that, sixth video. Yeah, and that was actually a request from Amy. Both of us felt that the actual official Merida's Castle set was a bit small and lacklustre and Merida deserved something a lot bigger. And so I did end up building Merida's Castle a lot larger. And I, I'm pretty sure that I had to do maybe two or three Bricklink orders for that one as well because um, every time a Bricklink order came in, I tweaked the castle a little bit and then I wasn't quite happy with it. <laughs> so then I felt like I needed to tweak it again. Oh, hang on. Um, so, yeah, but I really enjoyed that build and I do definitely really want to find a way to incorporate that into my city at some stage as well. But I have a funny feeling that there's going to be multiple versions of my city, so that's going to be interesting. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Last year's um, advent calendar, we had the beautiful gold statue and so that's who that was. <laughs> so grandma willow the tree canoe miko flit yes mama's bricks back back she's back <laughs> they're watching wreck it ralph <laughs> no that's a, i think that that's a really fun film it's one of the films, though, that I haven't seen, but I've seen so many clips on it in different contexts that I may have seen a large proportion of the movie without even knowing it. So, and I did really like all the um, casual Disney princesses that they included, I think, in the second Wreck-It Ralph movie. Um, and I know that there were a few people that did um, the casual Disney princesses as repaint mini dolls, which I thought was so cool and so nice. Okay. Where am I up to here? I think. Right. So that's good. Yeah, I would really... I would really like to see more Merida sets as well. I completely agree. I know that you and I have spoken about that on so many occasions, Amy. It would be really nice. Um, yes, it would be fantastic to see that. I am. Um, I'm in full agreement. I would love to be able to see, you know, um, Merida's mum, a few more bears. That would be brilliant. I know that we got the triplets as bears, though, so that was sort of quite nice that we did end up with them in a set. So that's cool. It, yes, Lego Girl, we're, we're just creating our wish list of any Lego movie that we would like to see as a set, and I definitely think that The Hunchback of Notre Dame should be an option in the same way that Zootopia should be an option. And then even things like, you know, I really love, you know, The Lady and the Tramp. That's such a lovely film. I really think that that's such a cool film. And even um, Pucky's asleep now, so I can probably say this, but Pucky's favourite movie is 101 Dalmatians. So whenever I put 101 Dalmatians on, he sits down and he watches it. <laughs> because I think that the sound that they use in 101 Dalmatians is actually real dog noises. So it's not fake dog noises, so he actually likes it. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, um, I do know that Claire did do them um, in their casual, like, 
um, pajamas, yes. And did LEV do them as well? I thought LEV did them as well, but I might just be getting very muddled as I tend to do during my live streams. So, yeah. <laughs> yes, Brett's also saying the lady in the tramp as well. Like I just sort of go, it would be so cool, like, you know, do like a junkyard or something with like the little dogs as characters. I just would absolutely love to see that. That would be really cool. Um, so, oh, so LEV did a few of them, but not all of them. Yes, but we know that Claire did do all of them, didn't she? So, yeah. There's all, it, I think, I think, like, I mean, the repaints just take such a long time. Like, Lego Girl, you'd know that because you do your repaints as well, and it can get quite um, time-consuming. And the, the thing that quite often I find as well is having to wait for the drying time. So if I've got, like, a bit of time on the weekend, I can usually get, like, one or two layers done. But if you need to do more colours than that, is that then that's usually I have to wait for a whole nother week and hope that I'm not too busy the following weekend in order to do more, <laughs> more repaints. Yes, and even the spaghetti scene in the, in the laneway would be wonderful to have. Absolutely fantastic. Completely agree. Um, right, I think... Oh, hang on, is this? Oh, yes, that's need to have another one. Right, okay, I think. I think I'm going okay, gang. I don't think that I've missed too many parts in this so far. Oh, yes, animals theme. That would be amazing. See, that's the type of stuff that we need to put forward in Lego Ideas. <laughs> 100, 101 Dalmatian, Lady in the Trap, <laughs> Lion King. All fantastic. You know, even like Aristocats for the cat enthusiasts would be kind of cool. Although that movie didn't date as well as some of the others. <laughs> There's a few of them that have sort of managed to survive the test of time better than others. Oh, Brickish, you're back. <laughs> cool. That's fine. Yes, take care, Jezza. I'll, look, I'll keep an eye out for your videos. So it would be good to see them when you get a chance to, to post them and, and all of that sort of stuff. And take care, mate. The tower on the side of the courtyard is Filcher's office. This one? Is that the one you're talking about? Yeah, oh, thanks, Brickish. Yes, it's coming along. I haven't gone too far astray. I have had to take a few parts out here and there because I've been distracted with talking and building. But I had to do that a couple of times um, this afternoon when I was sort of building up the first few bags anyway. So that's all good. And we were just talking about in the chat um, if there was a movie that you would like to see be made into a Lego set. So any movie you like that could get made into a Lego set, what would it be? We've been throwing out all sorts of ideas. So that's good. Oh, Aristocats is your sister's favourite movie. Cool. <laughs> Getting the castle itch, yes. I think that, yeah, there's been a few people, I think, on um, YouTube, hasn't there, that have been building up, like, very huge versions of... Um, the Hogwarts castle, which has been quite good. And I think that they have sort of been a few sort of like castle enthusiasts as well. So um, right. 
Okay. So, yeah, Hogwarts is sort of like not a bad way to, to get a bit of castle... into out well from lego but it's not the same as an actual sort of the traditional sort of castle theme though is it um in the same way that we do have obviously our disney princess <laughs> our disney princess castles as well but obviously they're very different to the traditional sort of castle theme All right now i have to find a sticker um, seven Right, seven, here we go. Oh, yes. How to train your dragon. I know, I've still got to get that, that build underway, Amy. <laughs> it is on my to-do list. I know that I've been saying that for <laughs> years now. It is on my to-do list. If only I had more time. I think that that's always the tricky thing, though, isn't it, is finding the time to do all the Lego building that we would like to do and the space. That's been the other huge challenge that I've been um, trying to figure out. And it was so nice when I was able to, you know, have um, that space in, you know, my family members' sort of spare room in order to have my Lego city there. But it is sort of tricky because then I need to have that sort of de dedicated time to actually go over there and build. And I have also sort of noticed that there have been occasions where the parts that I know that are over there are parts that I need here or vice versa. <laughs> so I don't always have the right parts in the right location at the right time. But, of course, I am so, so appreciative that I do actually get to have a Lego room with a fantastic city in it. So that's good. I don't, I don't know whether or not I know of those, but let's post that up there in case other people know of those franchises. I've not heard of them, but that doesn't mean much. Others may have. <laughs> the characters, yes, we've been talking about the characters. And um, also you know, just so that the chat knows, is that I have actually planned on, you know, um, creating the little dragon as well. But I just, again, I just haven't had time. And I even found quite, I think I found quite a good way to be able to customise um, a few different parts from a few different sets in order to create that gorgeous little dragon. I can't think of his name either today. So you'll have to let me know what the dragon's name is in the chat. <laughs> My mind has gone blank or more blank than what it normally is. There's been so much going on, though, outside of Lego and YouTube, so that's all cool. Yeah, and that's also it, Brickish, isn't it? Like you and I have both down to having, you know, a piece of bread a day in order to be able to afford Hogwarts um, and or well, Diagon Alley rather which is fine. Like I just sort of go, I'm happy to do that. You know, that's one of the reasons why I'm happy to go to work because then I get to enjoy my hobby. Um, but it's also finding enough space to be able to do things, you know. And I think that it's also one of those things where you just sort of go, you know, it is really nice and I would never, ever begrudge anyone, but it's so nice to see people like Dr McBrick who obviously has, you know, a, a huge amount of space in his basement in order to be able to create a fantastic Lego city and I just sort of go, oh, I really wish that, you know, we could all enjoy that luxury of having that wonderful space in, in our houses so that we could sort of just keep expanding and, and building more and, be able to enjoy our Lego and display it elsewhere and, and all of those sorts of things. So, yeah, space is definitely a tricky one. Toothless the dragon, of course. Oh, my God. Thanks, Amy. <laughs> you guys definitely look after me when I have my mind blanks. <laughs> oh, dear. 
I'm feeling more and more elderly. I'm, I think that BFAB was quite accurate when he said that I'm 96. I'm definitely starting to feel that way <laughs> today. <laughs> I do know that some of you do know this, but I have recently started a new job. So I think that that's where um, a few of my videos have been a bit slower than usual, which is not my preference. But um, yes, starting a new job can be, a, you know, it's a nice place to be and I'm really happy to, to have the, the role, but it's still new. <laughs> so it is just a bit stressful um, trying to figure out everything in a new workplace and how everything works and, and all of that sort of stuff. And I've also just noticed as well that I just end up being so tired as well. So I think that that might be a bit more of an age thing as well, which I don't necessarily know whether or not I should be admitting to on on YouTube. But anyway, it is just one of those things. So, yes, I do really like... Oh, Corne, that's fantastic news. I'm so pleased to hear that. That's brilliant. I am. Um, yeah, that's going to be really wonderful. <laughs> so I think, yeah, sounds amazing. Right. Hmm. Yes, I think that that's the other thing that I've sort of trying. Um, I, I think that that's where I'm going to be trying to go with my city as well, Brett. Um, I think that there will be a few sections that I will try and keep in place for, like, longer. But I'm hoping that things like my jungle city area will be more like a bit temporary. So it might only be up for like three to six months as it sort of gets built and finished. And then once it's finished, then I'll tear it down and sort of put the parts to one side and whatnot. Um, and the other evening... <laughs> I didn't have the function to build and film and I didn't have the function to do any editing, but I did have the function to be able to go through and sort some of my Lego sets. So I did go back through some of my storage boxes where I keep all my old sets and sort of just go through and update them, condense them down even further and all of that sort of stuff. So, you know, that was sort of really good to be able to do that. Um which hopefully will then sort of reconcile some space as well, which is good. <laughs> With seven kids, a partner, cat, dog, rabbit, lol, yes. <laughs> you will need to be consolidating some of your sets. <laughs> yeah, which is really cool. So, you know, uh, but again, like it's uh, for me, I just sort of go, I don't have the kids or the the rabbit or the cat, but and it is just me and Pucky, but I still need to sort of be able to have enough space. Um, I've lost my little arch piece. <laughs> Can't see it. Oh, there it is. Oh, phew. There we go. So, yes. Excellent. Yes. Again, you know, like, I mean, again, even for me, I just sort of went, one of the things that was really inspiring was actually JC from Small Brick City, and he was actually the person that gave me the idea of putting my L sets onto my bookshelf so that sort of each elf ended up with a, a bookcase shelf to have their sets displayed on. So, you know, I just sort of go, I think that sometimes it is a matter of being creative either, you know, rotating the sets around frequently so, you know, we can always keep our favourites out on display but um, for the things that we might not necessarily be that interested in anymore or if we get something that we prefer or whatever, we can always swap them around. So, yeah, you will be 
pleased to know as well, Amy, and probably Corne as well. Um, I did able to get, I was able to get hold of four of the beach cubes. Unfortunately, Kmart had sold out of Mia's beach cube, so I've had to order that from the Lego shop. So, which usually takes the longest to get here. Any of the Australians in the chat will be able to vouch for that as well, is that it seems like you have to wait the longest to get your sets from the actual official Lego store and all the other unofficial stores are usually a lot quicker. So <laughs> that's what's going to be happening with that. But hopefully once I get Mia's cube here is that then I'll be able to post the video. And depending on how I go this week, at work at my new job I might even try and film like the first oops, the first four cubes and get that sort of almost ready and edited and all of that sort of stuff so that when Mia's cube arrives I can just post that video but I also want to make sure that at some stage this week I can try and get a thank you video up since I have got my lovely 400 subscribers you know my amazing little group of buddies my Lego mates. So that would be really cool. So I'll teach four to 12 year olds, all kinds of subjects, maths, geography and history and all the base subjects. Oh, that's so fantastic. <laughs> yes, you're mad, Brett. But again, the thing with Lego is even if you take it all apart, you can put it all back together again. So even if you put all your Lego trains away for a while and you put them into storage, nothing is stopping you from getting them all out, building them back up again and having trains back in your city. It might be a bit tricky if um, the kiddies get hold of the trains and the parts associated with those sets. So it might end up going a bit all over the place. But if you can just sort of break break them down and keep them stored away or whatever, then, you know, rotate stuff around as much as I, well, yeah, and I think that that's going to, you know, like I said, that's probably what's going to have to happen in my Lego city as well. I can't imagine that I'm going to have my frozen area there forever. I do really want to make sure that I get that finished and get it looking beautiful and get it the way that I see it in my head. But I also think to myself that probably once it's done and I've got some really good photos and some really nice videos of it, it would be really nice to sort of swap that out with something else. And even where I will be having the uh, jungle area is that I sort of think to myself it would be really cool um, to put the amusement park area in there, which was originally the area that I had planned to put there first but I think it might be more fun to do the jungle area now. <laughs> oh, okay, yes. <laughs> cool. Madhouse. <laughs> Senses you. Oh, is that your nickname, Brett, the Joker? <laughs> Excellent. Oh, well, there we go. That's that's handy, though. And I think that that's the whole thing, you know. I just sort of go, we just have to think creatively about how we want our Lego. Like I just sort of go, again, you know, I can just dream that one day I will be able to afford a warehouse where I can have a huge Lego city <laughs> and display all of my friend sets across the city in one giant area and to be able to afford all the Bricklink park parts that I'd need to go alongside that and then also have enough room to continue to expand. <laughs> but I don't think that that's going to be the reality of my life somehow. <laughs> and that's okay. You know, I'm not whinging. But, you know, I just sort of go, it's just really good fun. And I think that it's also quite funny that quite often we just sort of bond over the same stuff <laughs> since we're all in the same boat when it comes to that type of stuff. Well, not all of us, but many, many of us are in that same situation. So, which is fine.
I um I must I must admit that I have missed a few of um LEV's videos recently as well because I've been watching everybody else's. So I'm a bit behind with what's going on on LEV's channel. And I do usually try and make sure that I support her since she is a fellow Australian, even though I think she's over in Queensland. So she's on the opposite side of the country to me, or maybe she's New South Wales. I'm not sure. But yes. And then I also just quite like supporting some of the mini doll channels as well, since there's fewer of us compared to the Star Wars <laughs> enthusiasts, Lego enthusiasts. Yes, I saw that. So yeah, over here, that's all the pro pro proclamations that Umbridge made. So that's definitely the that part of the castle and I think um, from <laughs> memory um, we do get Umbridge's room somewhere in and amongst all of this as well and Mama's Bricks also dreaming that dream as well to have the ginormous um, the ginormous Lego area where we can just keep building and building and building and be creative and wonderful and have lots of fun with our Lego sets. And how's your um, city going, Mama's Bricks? Because I know that you were putting in the different levels and then you had to wait a bit because you went camping. And then I think that there was a little bit of a hold up with some of the carpentry stuff as well. Not that I'm trying to rush you, it's just out of curiosity. I did see that you posted a video with a haul. I haven't watched that one yet, but hopefully I might get a chance to watch that one tomorrow. So because I did notice, I think it was about 20 minutes long or something, wasn't it? So I was sort of um, faffing around a bit today and making a few decisions as to which videos I could watch and which ones I could squeeze in and which ones I could postpone. So it is my... Um, stepdad's birthday though tomorrow so I know that we're catching up with him and my mum for lunch um, but I should be able to catch up on a few more YouTube videos over breakfast and possibly in the evening as well so that'll be quite sort of good I think yes I think that they've gone in the right spot <laughs> Once again, I'm struggling with being able to tell whether or not these are in the right spot or not. I think so. Oh, yes, please. Can you please tell us what animal it is? I'm not I'm not too I'm not even too sure who's getting what animal in the beach cubes. I haven't seen much. Corne's guessing flamingo. You'll have to tell us animal and colour as well, Amy. Please. <laughs> if I'm not getting too bossy. So I'm I'm curious to see how we go with the um summer cubes as well and whether like how different they're going to be to the lovely summer heart boxes that we got last year. Oh, a coral flamingo. Oh, that's probably quite a good match. Yes. <laughs> See, mother and son, <laughs> once again, are saying the same thing. The most realistic colour choice for that animal. <laughs> yes. Oh, and, um, I, yeah, I was also quite lucky because I was able to get um, all the summer cube animals on bricks and pieces as well so I've now got two bricks and pieces orders with the um, various coloured animals from the various cubes that I didn't have colours for but of course because I haven't opened any of my summer cubes yet I just got one of each animal I think I did get a few extra flamingos and I think I also got a few extra turtles because I do love turtles <laughs> yes no that's okay you know 
Um, there's never any rush. I'm always just curious as to where people are up to and whether or not I've missed something. I did um, miss, like I wasn't on Instagram for a few days, so I wasn't sure whether or not I'd missed something that had been posted or hadn't been posted on Instagram. Um, again, just due to the new job and being quite tired and busy and all of that sort of stuff when it comes to those things. So, but again, that's all good. Yeah, um, oh, cool. honestly, Corne, the first time that I used BrickLink, it was, I was muddled, I was confused, I didn't know what was going on. Um, but I do think that there might be a few like YouTube tutorials about using BrickLink. And once you get the hang of it, it's actually sort of like quite handy. And I think that for you over in Europe, you probably find it quite easy because you'd have lots of sellers to choose from and to pick from. But I think the easiest way that it was described to me was that it's almost like eBay, but just for Lego. So like literally you can go on to BrickLink and find almost any set or any part, not all of them. <laughs> they don't have the marvellous mystery mini doll from Poland on BrickLink, um, but you can almost find any set or any part on BrickLink in sort of any quantity. And they are usually labelled as whether or not they're new or used parts. So, again, it is sort of like super handy to be able to sort of um, especially for like mock building. So, you know, like uh, with what Amy and I were talking about earlier in Merida's Castle. So in order to make Merida's Castle bigger, it was really easy to do that with BrickLink because then I could just order extra tan parts or whatever. Um, yeah, so that's sort of BrickLink, but um, it's also dangerous because once you start ordering from BrickLink then you'll have no money left because all you'll do is order Lego. <laughs> so yeah it is it's sort of quite funny really isn't it. Uh, next week um, I don't know Amy um, possibly, well, I, I had, I know that last week I did say that I was going to be doing the swimming pool set, um, but then when Hogwarts arrived, I just couldn't wait two weeks before I started building this since I've had to wait, I don't know, a year or two before I've even been able to get this set, a year. So um, next week I will be building up the swimming pools. So maybe Andrea, do you think? But I honestly don't mind. I think that it's whatever. Um, the tw twin bracelets, I'm not sure I know. I'm not sure if I know that one. <laughs> Corne said Andreas as well. Maybe Andreas then, Amy, but you can you can pick as well. Oh, Andrea, does Andrea have the turtles? I'd like to know what coloured turtle you end up with. But, again, that's just my own selfish sort of turtle enthusiasm when it comes to that sort of stuff. So ultimately your pick, but I think I will sort of put in a vote for Andrea, but you can veto me. Oh, my gosh. Uh, oh, Emma has the turtle. Oh, my bad. Oh, Andrea had the turtles last time. No, I did know that because quite often I like Andre or Emma's stuff the most because she usually has all the purple stuff and I love all the purple stuff. And I remember thinking the other day, oh, my gosh, Emma has the turtles and the purple stuff. That's all about my cube. I do remember that. <laughs> A few days after your birthday, you'll be moving so you can't unbox Diagon Alley for at least two weeks. Oh, no. That's okay, though. It'll go really quickly if you're moving, so you won't really notice it. I um, 
I did keep the Disney castle and the Disney train in their boxes for quite a long time um, before I actually built them up because I knew that I wanted to try and build them up in a longer video and I wasn't sure how that was going to work. And so when I had a few of my little Lego mates invite me on to um, hang out with them in their section of the 72-hour live stream from last time, um, I thought, oh, that's a really good chance to build up some of those bigger sets. So that's what I was able to do. And then even as I was thinking about sort of doing my own live streaming, I also thought that it would be really good oops, um, to have some of the bigger sets to build up during a live stream too because the friend sets are, are really great and obviously I absolutely love them, but they are quite quick to build. So it's nicer to have like some of the larger sets so that we can talk for longer, isn't it? So, yes. Right. Just putting in these stained glass windows and I think that they look so nice. I will turn it around in a little bit um, so that then you guys can see, but I'm not too sure how well they're going to show up for you because um, it won't be having light behind them if that makes sense. But the stained glass windows look so nice. I'm so impressed with how um, the Lego designers have created them. Um, new one here. And a little yellow one there. Yeah. So has anyone gotten any of the Super Mario sets? I do think that they look quite interesting, but it's probably not going to be a theme that I'll collect because I'm already collecting far too much Lego <laughs> and there's only so many themes that I can sort of collect and pick up. But I have quite enjoyed seeing what other people have been making of those sets. So as always, I do look forward to seeing other people's videos and you know, live vicariously through their Lego spending. Um, and I think it's sort of been quite interesting as well because I think that there's been a few people that aren't necessarily like Lego fans that have started to get back into Lego, like adult Lego fans that aren't really into Lego that have started to get back into it specifically because of the Mario sets. So I think B Fab and Matt were talking a little bit about that last night on Matt's stream, which I think is really cool. Like it's really nice for other people to sort of um, discover their joy of Lego again. So that's been interesting for the Mario sets. So I'm not too sure if anyone has actually gotten them because no one in the comments is really responding, so maybe not. I don't know whether or not we're Mario fans here or not, are we? Right. Okay. Oh, my gosh, this is looking so fantastic. It's wonderful. Right. And... Okay. Right. So we're just putting on all these like little facing parts now so we're covering up all those little side <laughs> sections yeah <laughs> pucky pucky's a very noisy drinker and he also dribbles so he's very messy always always around his water bottle or water bowl is dribbles which is fine. I've got a tiled floor and I do have to sort of mop up after him regularly. <laughs> but, yes, he's very noisy. It's funny. Funny little fellow, my little puck. 
and brickish oh fantastic you've got the starter course built it last night oh so but you won't be getting any more okay uh brickish are you going to do a video on that or was that just sort of for your own personal fun and enjoyment so yeah corn a bit overpriced so not your thing and I think that it does come back to being able to pick and choose what we spend our, you know, hard-earned dollars on and what sets we're going to get and what sets we're, we're not. And I think that that's all part of being a Lego fan as well, you know, as we were saying earlier. It, does, it is a lovely hobby and I absolutely love it. And I, as I said, I love being part of the community, but it can be a bit pricey at times. You know, especially for anyone who is even remotely like me, because I like having complete collections, which is not always the best way to be living a life, is that sometimes it's okay not to have every single set or every single aspect of a collection. But it's usually quite a sort of challenge for me to have to convince myself that that's all okay. Oh, okay, so Brickish got the set when it was on sale. Yes, that seems like a wise move. I also usually tend to go through and have compare prices at all the different sort of stores in Australia that actually sell uh, Lego sets to make sure that I try and find the cheapest version possible of that particular set if I can. And then it's also quite nice because I am on a couple of the Facebook groups here in Australia as well. And so there's usually a few savvy people who will then share what stores are actually having sales. Yep. Cents per part is usually quite good. But I also think that it's even looking at things like, um, you know, what parts you're actually getting in the set. You know, that Diagon Alley also has a lot of minifigures and a, at least one or two exclusive minifigures. <laughs> you can call it fun. I might do a video on it. <laughs> you don't have to if you don't want to. I'm just curious. <laughs> No pressure. <laughs> I did, I think I did see Jan Bricks do a video on it and he was very good on his video because he was just like, oh, you bounce this around here and you bounce it over there and then it's sort of done. <laughs> and I was like, oh. <laughs> so we'll see. Again, uh, Corne, I think it's going to be interesting to see uh, whether or not we get peach later on. I'm not sure. You know, I don't know how many waves Lego intends to do with Mario. So we may end up getting peach in the next wave or something. Who knows? Or maybe not at all. We can never sort of quite tell, can we, with Lego sometimes. Yeah, I don't know a lot about the Brickheads range. So um, I do know that some people really enjoy them. I know that um, Kaz from Blockhead UK has a lot of the Brickheads. And I think that um, Robin Hull Bricks as well possibly likes the Brick or some of the Brickheads. Um, but again, um, oh, Amy loves them as well. Oh, cool, yeah. I, I do think that they are quite cute, but I haven't really um, gotten into collecting them. I think I will be getting the exclusive um, Hagrid and um, Buckbeak brickheads with the Diagon Alley set that I've bought, which has actually been shipped. I got an email from Lego yesterday saying that it was shipped, so that's good. So, yes. 
Yes, I did, apparently. It hasn't arrived yet, so I can't confirm it, but um, I, I did, uh, it was in the bag. So when I checked out and, and bought the set, Buckbeak and Hagrid were actually in my bag. So I should be getting them. Oops. Okay, right. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully that shouldn't be too. Oh, um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Like, I mean, I don't really keep up on those sorts of things, so I don't know. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I can't answer that question or statement. I don't know. Um, as far as I could see, when I checked out of the Lego store, it seemed to say that the Hagrid and the Buckbeak was in my bag again oh yes that that might be true so yeah it might be that they had it hadn't arrived in the stores so again in perth we don't have a lego store here so i wouldn't know what goes on inside of lego stores <laughs> so um yeah that might have been it i do know that there has been very strange things going on with like the Lego distribution and those sorts of things, which is fine. Like, you know, it's crazy times and we you know, people's health and well-being is much more important than my Lego orders. So I'm always, you know, thinking of that stuff first. Um so um, yeah, even the other day, Amy, uh, Amy and I were talking because I haven't seen any information at all anywhere in Australia about um, the Disney princess sets. So every time I've gone to the Lego store, so I even checked the Lego store again the other day and there was... Oh, God, I have gone really askew here. What's going on? Um, so, yeah, I even checked the Lego store the other day and um, that it, it isn't even listed as coming soon. So Aurora's Cottage and Rapunzel's Tower, there's no mention of that at all here in Australia. So I am hoping that we will get them event eventually and I'm hoping that Australia doesn't miss out on those sets because I really love both of them. Rapunzel's one of my favourite princesses and I've loved all the Rapunzel sets so far. And Aurora's Cottage is so adorable. I really, really want to be able to grab that one. So hopefully they will arrive at some stage, but no, not yet. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so... That's no good. The brickheads arrived. They look like they've been wrestling with <laughs> Daikon Alley. I know. I must admit, what sets did I get the other day? It was, oh, I think it was my troll set. And I had a few other little bits and pieces in there in order to make up to get the free postage. And literally, I think that there was like one strip so there was like four of those puff bags of air which was nowhere near enough to put in that box to stop everything from getting bashed around luckily they had put a fragile sticker on it so it it wasn't squashed and again I never keep bag or boxes anyway so I don't really mind if they get a bit damaged provided that the set is okay inside but yeah it is quite funny when we get that um Holes in the Great Hall site. Oh, do you mean here? Yeah, I don't know. That's just that's just the design. But I don't know whether or not something's going here, so it might end up being covered up. So we'll see. 
Well, yeah, like, I mean, the the reason why Amy and I were talking about it is because Amy's already got both of them and built both of them and they haven't even gotten here in Australia. Like, we don't even have a picture on the official Lego store saying that they're coming soon. So I have absolutely no idea what's going to happen with those princess sets here in Australia. They still haven't even been listed. Mama's Bricks... Last week, which was re retiring, yes. The new princess sets, I know, me too. I love both of them. I'm just really concerned about them not even showing up anywhere in <laughs> Australia as a remote possibility for me to be able to buy them. So, again, <laughs> um, you know, that might mean that I'll have to resort to BrickLink. <laughs> see where I can find them but not yet I am happy to wait for a little while and see and see if anything changes between now and then so that goes there and then we have this bit one over here so there's that little turret Okay. Oh, Amy, they may release them at Christmas in Australia, possibly. Sometimes we do have different release dates, don't we? And that might end up being like the um, big push for Christmas presents in Australia. Because I think last year we got the Frozen 2 set sort of before Christmas. I think they were late October, early November here in Australia. I'm trying to remember. I, I actually don't know when they came out, but I think that they were around that time. For Frozen 2, so maybe that's when we'll be getting the those ones. But, you know, again, I just sort of go, it's not a, it's not a problem, you know, it's not a big deal. It's just sort of quite, I just get confused. <laughs> just get confused easily. I think that that's been the theme of this stream tonight. <laughs> I've lost all grip of the English language. I can't remember anything and I'm very confused. <laughs> so we'll see. But that does make sense. It does make sense to have the princess sets released for Christmas. Um, and then we'll have, obviously, the Friends Advent Calendar for the Friends line before Christmas. So that will be the other little thing that we'll be getting. And then I think last week we did say that there were also going to be Christmas cubes as well, weren't there? So that's probably going to be the other little Christmas item that we will be getting. Um, so that will be quite good fun and then we'll get to see how that goes I think um, yeah yeah I think like I mean I obviously I can't really say anything about how things work in the Lego universe but I do think that there are some sets that sort of come out in waves and then there are other sets that they're happy to sort of continue to, to restock. So, and I think that the Harry Potter set seems seem to have come out in waves. And so I think that then it's sort of like, well, once they're gone, they're gone. Um, but who knows? Oh, winter cubes, not Christmas cubes, winter cubes. Yeah, I hope that we get winter sweaters as well because I really like the um, mini dolls that we've had in the past as part of the advent calendars that have had their holiday sweaters on. So, and then I also really liked the snow resort theme as well where they had their ski outfits on and those sorts of things. But it would be quite cute just to get, like, winter sweaters and beanies and boots and all of that sort of stuff. Like, that's really my jam. I really love, which sounds funny for an Australian, I do really prefer winters as a season. 
Although any anyone that lives anywhere that gets remotely cold during winter time would probably scoff at our Australian winters, especially over here on the west coast. They really aren't that chilly. <laughs> it would probably feel like a spring day to many of you. <laughs> Let's see, we'll see. Oh, my gosh, yes. Here we go, Corne. It uh, looks like we are getting a whole heap of more stained glass stuff going on on this end, which may cover up the peep holes. So we'll just have to see what happens. Okay. Building up these little bits. So what else has been going on for you guys? We've covered off some of our Lego updates, which has been really cool to hear all about that. Does anyone have any other plans for the weekend or is it all just going to be relaxing and staying home and doing some fun stuff at home, doing chores or homework or whatever? Oh, Amy, do you know that the winter cubes are going to, are they going to be dressed in pyjamas? Well, that would be kind of cool because we've never had pyjamas before. I'd be happy with that because I do think that we've got mini dolls in our advent calendar again, which is nice. As much as I enjoyed the as much as I enjoyed the sets with just like the Lego built baubles and that sort of decorations and that sort of stuff I do like getting my mini dolls in the advent calendar yes but yeah this is the big bay window at the end of the great hall where Snape flew out of it when McGonagall was coming off after him. And all the drama. Oh, so it's the advent calendar has pyjamas. Is that what we mean? I'm getting very... Oh, and Mrs Claus. Yes, I think I remember seeing that as well. Yep, no worries, Brickish. That's fine, mate. Oh, I hope your hubby's okay. I'm, I'm. Hopefully it is just a cold. I know that when my brother got sick earlier, he had to go and get a COVID test, but he was fine. It was just a cold. But obviously it is better to test and be safe and know exactly what's going on so that we can keep an eye on things and monitor everything. So you're doing the right thing. But, yeah, I hope that he's okay, Mum's Bricks. That's no good to hear that he's a bit poorly, a bit unwell. Right. Um, I'm losing my little stained glass window bits. <laughs> so I'm getting muddled in. Oh, there's the other two. Right. This. And do we know anything about any of our sets that we're getting next year? Have we heard anything about them yet? Or is this too far in advance to figure out what's going on with any of the themes for next year, like our lovely friend sets and princess sets? We have had confirmation that Dots is returning, so that's good to hear. I'm very happy about that. And it's really funny, though, because when we um, first heard that Dots was going to be launching, I remember Amy and I sort of going, well, I don't know whether or not that's going to be for me. It's not really my thing. And to be perfectly honest, like a lot of it sort of isn't in the fact that I do, you know, I don't really wear the bracelets, but I don't really wear any 
jewelry ever anyway so it's not that I don't like the bracelets it's just I don't ever think to put them on because I don't ever think to put any sort of jewelry on um not that the bracelets are really jewelry but you know what I mean like any accessories on I should say I very rarely wear any accessories and um yeah, but I just, it's been quite funny because I have actually really enjoyed building a lot of the dot sets and I wasn't sure that I've, I would. I would think, you know, at first I thought that I would find it a bit too, like, simple or a bit too basic, but I do actually find it really relaxing, which has been really nice. So, you know, it's been good to have sort of dots come on the scene and then it's also been really nice to be able to see, you know, how... Um, Matt from Family Bricks and Kaz from Blockhead UK have been able to get involved with building up some of the sections um, for the Dots house. So I've really enjoyed seeing some of their videos that they've been able to post about that. So that's been really cool. I, am, I must admit I am a little bit jealous that they've been able to do that. But um, that's okay. I am... Um, <laughs> Watching it is 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 good, so that's fine. But yeah, it gets quite funny. Um, <laughs> yes, that's pretty iconic. I must admit, the favourite quote. Oh my gosh, favourite quote from Harry Potter. I think that that is a very very good one. Definitely. Um, what's obviously always is just an iconic quote and was just such a game changer around the Snape character. Do you know what I mean? So that's something that, you know, just especially in the final movie when I was watching that and Harry took Snape's tears and then all the history suddenly unfolded and it all just sort of clicked into place and it all made sense. So, you know, that I thought was such a wonderfully fascinating character arc to have occur. Um, yeah, so that's definitely it. Oh, that, yes, Day, daycare definitely is a source of lots and lots of germs. Still too early for any news. <laughs> yes, exactly. But again, I just sort of go, it is only temporary. It's a little bit of discomfort temporarily and it's better to know. I think that the not knowing would be much, much worse. So it's better to know and then, you know, you can just stay safe until you recuperate and make sure that everybody else is okay. So that's all good. Yeah, shouldn't have said that. I oh, know that's iconic as well. Oh, and then, um, you know, when, um, when the ministry comes to get Dumbledore and he's like, you know, you're under the impression that I'm going to go quietly and then, you know, the phoenix and crap and all of that sort of thing and, you know, um, then Kingsley, is it Kingsley the character? goes? have to admit, he's got style. <laughs> Dumbledore's got style. And it's just like, yes, he just flew away, <laughs> disappeared with a phoenix. <laughs> That's a pretty iconic line as well, for me anyway. There are a few more gaps here as well, Corne. So it's an interesting little section of Hogwarts over here. <laughs> We've still got gaps. <laughs> They've not all been hidden. Right. Okay. Um, uh, I don't, uh, I think that 
Well, you see, the thing in Australia, Corday, that's been sort of quite interesting is that different areas in Australia have had very different experiences with COVID. So fortunately here, where I am in Western Australia, is that we haven't had any COVID transmissions for over 51 days now. And the vast majority of COVID transmissions that we have had in Western Australia have been people returning home who have then gone into self-isolate. And the handful, the very, very small handful of COVID transmissions that did occur within the community were when loved ones had returned home and accidentally gave COVID to their partner or a family member or whoever. Um, very early on here in Western Australia, um, we actually also pressed criminal charges against people who weren't obeying the restrictions. Obviously, within the correct legal parameters and, you know, there was plenty of press about that sort of stuff and obviously very important reasons why, you know, we needed to be so careful. Um, no, that's not in the right spot. So, you know, I think that in that respect, we've sort of been quite fortunate. Um, but, yeah, so we've had a very different experience here compared to, say, the people over east. So Steve, who I was streaming with yesterday on his live stream, um, he's in Melbourne, he's in Victoria, and... Um, it was only last week that they were still having, um, I think, 90 new cases per day. And I think this week they've been able to get it down to 50 new cases per day. And I think that there have been people protesting in Victoria about it, which for me is very disappointing. I don't really understand the logic between protesting a virus Viruses don't know that you're protesting. That's not anything that a virus can pay any attention to. A virus doesn't care whether or not you're protesting. Um, all a virus wants to do is find a host and replicate as often as it can. That's the main goal of a virus. And so it is then just a matter of being quite sensible about where to from from there as far as a virus is concerned, you know. So I find, yeah, I, I'm just very baffled by protesting anything like that. It just, I just find it very strange indeed, particularly when if you are protesting something, you are putting yourself and others at greater risk of increasing transmission. So to me, I just sort of go, that doesn't make any clear and logical sense at all. And then I also think that it can be quite inconsiderate and possibly even bordering on selfish because there are people who would love to be able to not be at work and to be able to stay home and whether or not they're a frontline worker in a supermarket or a cleaner or whether or not they're a medical professional that's working in hospitals and looking after people, whether or not they're the medical professionals that are taking COVID tests from people, they're putting themselves at risk. That's not something that they necessarily would want to be doing, I can't imagine, but they do it anyway because they care. And... So I just sort of find it quite insulting that people would then be protesting a virus that, I don't know, can't really, that doesn't really care whether or not you're protesting it or not. But, of course, by the same token, I do think that it was really important to be protesting for Black Lives Matter. <laughs> so... <laughs> I think that they that was a, a moment in time that actually did need to have protests occur. And I don't know whether or not that happened over in um, the Netherlands where you are, Corne, but over here we actually had Black Lives Matter protests. And what was really interesting was that people arrived with masks in groups and actually socially distanced from each other 
in order to peacefully protest. So, and um, and while the press here did want to try and make out like that was going to be a huge issue for for COVID transmissions. There wasn't a recorded COVID case here in Western Australia due to the Black Lives Matter protests. And apparently one of the protesters in Melbourne was found to be positive for COVID, um, but he actually didn't transmit COVID to anyone due to the protests. So, um, yeah, COVID can be prevented. I think that that's the main message that I took away from that bit of information anyway. So, yes, moving on from that intense conversation, <laughs> now go back to Dumbledore as an icon because I completely agree. <laughs> he is definitely an iconic character. Unfortunately, I haven't seen any of the Fantastic Beasts films yet. I know, I'm sounding like um, Perth is such a backwater. It's not, it's not, well, it is in the middle of nowhere, but I think I'm just bad at staying ahead of the curve and ahead of trends. So I'm usually the last person to jump, jump on and see something <laughs> or find the time to ever watch something because I end up watching YouTube so often. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's always sort of quite funny. But, yeah, I definitely thought that Dumbledore was a fantastic character as well. I thought that um, I think that one of the reasons why so many people love the Harry Potter books and the Harry Potter movies is because the characters are complex and they're multidimensional and, you know, they're not always sort of perfect and you don't always know what they're thinking about or you know, what their backstory is. And so I think that they become a lot more human in that way because obviously there are times where we do have to sort of act differently in certain settings and, you know, th there can only be times where we reveal so much about ourselves to different people. Um, so, you know, I, I do think that it's sort of interesting and it's been interesting reading the books as well and seeing the difference sort of between the books and the films because I do know the films so well. Like, that's obviously where my main love for um, Harry Potter has come from. <laughs> oh, no, that's no good. So, yes, there's been... I think it's also been quite interesting to see how different leaders have sort of been able to wrangle the whole COVID situation. And I and I don't think that it's been easy for anyone because I don't think that any country was really that well prepared to end up in the situation of, <laughs> you know, this type of thing. So, um, and, and I, even for me, I find that quite interesting as well because, you know, there's been a lot of very fantastic scientists for a very long time saying it's only going to be a matter of time before we get another, you know, big wave of, you know, a pandemic or whatever because you can predict it throughout history, usually every 100 years or so, is that there does seem to be a big thing that sort of comes out and, you know, is very difficult to manage. And I think that a lot of the time it seems like, the political leaders got complacent because there was SARS and then that didn't really sort of kick off and then in a big way, obviously, there were still people that that struggled with that and passed away from that. Same with the swine flu. That was quite a big one. That, But, again, it wasn't to this sort of same extent. And... And so I just sort of think, yeah, people just seem to have gotten a bit complacent and just sort of went, eh, it's never going to happen. The scientists don't know what they're talking about. And then, of course, it happened. So, yes. Oh, my gosh, yes. Oh, Dumbledore's death made me cry for sure. But what made me cry even more was... Yeah, in the 
last episode when it all revealed like I just about Snape because I just thought to myself like what a burden to have had to have carried like you know obviously Snape and Dumbledore got to the point where they cared about each other and they trusted each other um and obviously you know Dumbledore knew that he was going to be you know dying at some point because you know the writing was on the wall for him and you know Snape and him had discussed that and the fact that Dumbledore had asked Snape to make sure that it was him, I was just like, it's so heartbreaking. You know, they knew that they had to do that in order to get, you know, he who shall not be named to to trust the situation. So I just sort of went, oh, my gosh, that's even more heartbreaking. Imagine being Dumbledore and having to have that conversation. So, yeah, it's just sort of such a struggle. It's, yeah, and, yeah, me too. Like, I just sort of, like, I mean, Jacinta Ardern, the New Zealand Prime Minister, I just love her in so many ways. I think that she is so awesome and so fantastic. And myself and many of my friends are constantly posting on Facebook that we would just want her as our Prime Minister here because she is so awesome. Um, so yeah, she's been really, um, she, yeah, she's done a really amazing job in New Zealand. Again, they did have a few like little rogue cases that popped up about a month ago, but they've been able to sort that out and get that under control again as well. So that's been really good. Um, but yeah. It's interesting. I definitely think that it's interesting times. But, you know, again, I just sort of go, the thing that I always come back to, like, with these COVID protests is, A, it just goes to show how little people understand about viruses and human biology. And I think that the other thing that we've got to remember as well is, like, I think that, was it the bubonic plague in, you know, medieval times? That was around for 200 years. So they had issues with that plague for 200 years. Again, when we go back to like 1918 and the Spanish flu, is that that was around for many, many months, years, in order to sort of sort that out with, you know, hundreds and thousands of people who passed away from that. So for me, I just sort of go, there has never, ever been a time in history where we have actually been able to control a virus within a 12-month time span. So I think that there also needs to be a little bit of understanding around the reality of how viruses actually work. I'm getting very ranty about this, obviously, because, you know, outside of Lego, I do sort of work in public health and have, have worked in and around, you know, health issues for a very long time and being able to work in, in areas around prevention as well. So... Yes, it's interesting. It's interesting for for people who who it's interesting to hear how people talk about these sorts of things when it's been my job to talk about virus viruses for many years. <laughs> so yes. Okay. Okay, but I will say, oh, where are we up to? Yeah, oh, I've opened another bag, but I think that we might need to be wrapping things up very soon because we're at two hours and 43 minutes so far and I'm not too sure how much longer I will actually be able to build and focus. <laughs> so we'll keep going for a little bit longer. But, yeah, just... Just to let you guys know that we will sort of start at least thinking about finishing up soon. And I might even have to do the stickers tomorrow because I don't trust trying to do stickers on the lovely little flags at quarter to 11. <laughs> have I got those in the right spots? Oh, yes. Yes? No, that's not in the right spot. Oh, yes, it is. Okay. Right. 
Yeah. So, yes, it's interesting, like, interesting times, I think, in our world at the moment. But I also think that that's why we just need to be a little bit more patient with each other and a little bit more kind to each other as well. So that's sort of where I've been trying to come from. You know, is just to do my best to try and check in on people. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to be messing up. It's going to be another live stream tomorrow. I know we should live stream every day. Yay! Uh, no, probably. Well, next week we'll we'll be next week again. So it's not too long to wait. Hopefully, um, and I will possibly I will try and see if I can finish editing my other my city update as well. I don't know what happened, but I filmed all the video footage, but then I forgot to take any photos. So I don't have anything to use for a thumbnail um, or for my outro. So um, hopefully tomorrow, possibly in the morning, I will be able to duck over to my Lego room, possibly pick up my brother <laughs> before we go and visit my mum and my stepdad for lunch tomorrow for his birthday. So we can see how we're going. So I've got the little flags up. So that's very good. Very similar to how they are done. Um, in the in the larger set. Is this right? Okay, hang on. Right, yes. Not that one. This one. Maybe this one. Is it this one? Hmm, must be. Okay. I'm still struggling with trying to work out the pictures. <laughs> it's quite funny. Uh, yes. Next week will be the swimming pool. I don't know whether or not I will do a review on this Hogwarts. Um, so the Dementor Microfix, no, not in this bag. Um, but what I might end up doing is I might try and post more of this stuff maybe over on Instagram so that I can share it with you guys over there. I'll have to just see how I go with videos because um, I do want to make sure that I do the Summer Cubes video. That's a video that I definitely want to make sure that I do. I also know that I want to make sure that I do a thank you video. So that's the other thing that I want to make sure that I do. But I, I don't want to promise too many at the moment because obviously my new job. So I do know that that's sort of taking up quite a bit of time and energy that normally I would have been spending on uh, Lego. <laughs> so until I settle in to that in a bit more detail, like in a settle, settle into that job and make sure that things are sort of, you know, I'm feeling good about everything and not too stressed, is that then I'll probably just have to be a bit more um, mindful of how I go with the, with making too many promises about videos and stuff like that. So because I don't want to sort of say that I, I'll do something and then either not do it or get myself stressed out about it. So um, but definitely live streaming, that will continue. Happy to continue to do that because that's very little um, time aside from just sitting here on a Saturday night, which is cool because I don't know what else I would be doing on a Saturday night. Um, yeah, so we'll just sort of see how we go from there, if that's okay. So, yes, that's going to be the one where all of the little sig figs show up for the party, of course. So you have a little sig fig now, so you'll be there. Amy has a sig fig now, so she's always there. Mama's Bricks has a sig fig. So Mama's Bricks will be at that party as well. So there'll be lots of you guys hanging out there, which will be good. And then 
some of the others, some of the usual suspects that show up for these things will also be there. It's sort of quite interesting, though. <laughs> um, I'm not sure. Usually when I've ordered bricks and pieces, I've usually ordered it with a whole heap of other stuff. I'll double check Mama's Bricks. I'll try and uh, remember to have a look at my little invoice and see. I do know at the moment I have a huge number of VIP points, but that's because of this and Diagon Alley. I got both of these sets um, from, from Lego, so I've ended up with a huge amount of points. I don't think I've ever had as many points, so uh, which is fine, you know, in a good way. Um, so I'll just have to try and keep an eye out and see what happens with that. Um, but, yeah, I'm not sure. I should know that, shouldn't I? That's a very terribly irresponsible thing for me not to know. Um, yeah, I'll have a look into it and see. Oh, so, so you've... Have you not been able to get your order from Bricks and Pieces, Amy? Is that what you mean? So the parts that you wanted weren't there? That's a bit of a bugger. Yes, so we'll see how we go this for the next couple of weeks. So you'll just, yeah, just try and be patient with me when it comes to videos. Um, yeah, there are a couple that I do want to get, get up there, and but I'm also mindful that um, I might try and do more of my um, modified builds as well. So I might try and showcase some of those as videos so that then I can save the sets to actually build live on stream because I do really like chatting with you guys here. So, but um, it's probably just going to be a matter of making sure that we've got enough stuff to build and chat about and everything. So, yeah. Ooh, putting in the archways. I'm not sure whether or not, or how long have we got? About 10 minutes. So we'll be finishing up in about 10 minutes. I'm not sure if I'm going to get this bag built. We'll see. <laughs> Might go a little bit over. So that's all. That, that's all good. That's all fine. Pucky is very, very sound asleep at the moment, and he hasn't got his pyjamas on yet. So... We'll see whether or not he wants to wear his jammies tonight or whether or not he's happy just to be a little furry fellow. I am... Um... Oh, so they're not... So they're just not processing your order. Hmm, that's really funny. That's a bit strange, isn't it? So not too good. Um, so any thoughts on the Mose Isley Cantina and the lightsaber? Yes, interesting. I did watch Cy O'Connor's video that had quite a few photos on Moss Isley. And from my point of view, being quite a like Star Wars um, novice, <laughs> um, I, th I think that it looks like a nice set looking set. Like, I don't know all the characters. I don't know all the ins and outs of everything to do with Star Wars. You know, for me, I just sort of go, Ewoks are awesome. I love a good Ewok. I quite like to get some Ewok sets into my collection, but we'll just sort of see how we go with that over time. If it never happens, it never happens. Um, 
but yeah, I think that it looks like a really nice build. Architecturally, I quite like the look of it. You know, I just sort of go, it looks kind of cool, looks kind of interesting. Like, yeah, that's that's awesome. Um, the, some of the minifigures that Sai showed looked really good as well. So I just sort of went, yep, ha I'm happy with that. Like, I don't have that much to say about a Star Wars, you know, minifigure or whatever. You know, um, I think that Sai did mention that none of the minifigures have arm printing, but I just sort of go, I don't know why that would be an issue. I think that from what I could gather, the figs looked really cool. There was lots of weird and wonderful head shapes and everything. So for me, I just sort of went, that all looks okay from my perspective <laughs> as a complete Star Wars novice. The lightsaber build was a bit was a bit weird because it's just like the hilt, so which is cool, you know, if that's what they want to do. But I would think that the whole fun of a lightsaber is to actually be able to have, you know, like the light coming out of it as well. And one of the things that Matt was talking about on his stream yesterday was, you know, it would be really good to be able to have something in the lightsaber sets where you could actually add the light and the sound and that sort of side of things because that's sort of really what makes a lightsaber super special. And when he said that, I just went, oh, my gosh, that would be huge. Hey, Tayshon, how are you going? I'm talking about lightsabers because I know nothing about lightsabers, but here we are. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I just sort of went, yeah, if you could get a lightsaber to have light and sound with it, then I think that that would be a hugely epic thing, especially if you could do all the you know, huge, like all the main lightsabers that we've had over the years, Yodas and Vaders and Lukes and everybody else's. I think that that would be really interesting. Um, and well done on your stream as well, Tayshon. I didn't watch it live because it was like three or four o'clock in the morning for me. But um, while I was working from home, I did put your first stream on for about the first half an hour or 45 minutes. I then got called away to do some stuff for work, so I wasn't able to continue watching it, but I did see the beginning of it. And it was so good, Taisha, and you were having such a nice time chatting to everyone. It was really cool. And I really loved the um, Ninjago set that you were building as well. So that, that looked really cool too. Um, so hopefully I'll, I'll see how I go this week with working from home and I might be able to catch up on, on a bit more of that, which would be good to try and see how that build ends up. So that's really cool. I hope you enjoyed it and had good fun. You were getting lots of really nice comments from everyone as well from in that stream, so that's always good. Well-deserved nice comments as well, I must say. <laughs> so, yes, I'm just hogwarting things up, but we're almost at the three-hour mark, so I may have to be wrapping things up soon, but we'll see. I'm, I'm not sure if I'll get this bag built, but I'm kind of determined to get this one finished. And then we'll be up to bag 14. So in three hours, we have built seven bags. So I think that that's quite good. I think that that's, we've, we've, we've done well. Although I do have to keep stopping to read the instructions to make sure that I've not gone too far astray with things, <laughs> which is cool. So what about you guys in the chats? What are your thoughts about um, Moss Eisley and um, the lightsaber sets? It would be interesting to hear what some of you guys have to say, even if you're like me and not really a huge Star Wars expert. 
you're still entitled to have a bit of an opinion, especially if you like, you know, I think it will be really interesting to see how um, the lightsaber thing goes with the fans. That's what I'm more interested in is to see how the Star Wars fans think about it. You know, ob obviously I won't be getting the most Eisley set, so... It's um, it's not really, it's not really for me, which is fine. Not everything has to be. <laughs> let's get that bit in. So, um, it's it must be the beginning of the weekend for you as well, mustn't it, Tayshawn? So, Kone, rather go for Diagon Alley, better price, and, yeah, preference. And I think that that's the whole thing. It's, it is, you know, whatever our personal preference is as well, isn't it? So we don't all have to like the same stuff, and I think that's also what makes um, the Lego community so much fun as well is that there's such variety and there's so many different things to sort of pick and choose from. Okay, so this um, more, yeah. Oh, the other thing that I'm going to be interested to see as well, again, a set that I probably won't purchase for myself, but a set that I definitely want to be able to see videos on is the Ninjago Garden set. That's going to be really interesting, I think, to see. Mm. No, that's not in the right spot. Okay, right. This <laughs> I'm going astray. I'm going. I'm going rogue. <laughs> it's starting to get a bit late. Okay, I'll finish. I'm going to power through, and I really want to finish this bag. But it's going to mean concentrations. Right. Oh. oh, yes, Brett. Um, it's definitely worth um, subscribing to Tayshon's channel. I've um, Tayshon and I have been, um, we've known each other for a while as well now, haven't we? Um, for a little while. I can't remember whose channel we met through, um, but Tayshon just does some fantastic builds. Um, like a lot of houses and then has recently been doing videos with the animation and that sort of stuff in it, which has been really cool to watch. I always like seeing the Lego videos with animation in them because I quite enjoy that. I, I don't have the patience to be able to do that, I don't think. <laughs> so it takes real talent to be able to do the stop motion animation stuff. But, yeah, really good stuff. Um. But, yeah, also really fantastic, like, um, original designs. So Tayshon does a lot of, like, his own designs of buildings and architecture and that sort of stuff. I think you recently did a swimming pool build as well. Hi, aha, poop, poop three. <laughs> And Darren said, Stop. love the beautiful detail, but not at that price. Yeah, I think that that's going to be the interesting thing is the price point. So, like, I mean, for me, it's unlikely that I would probably purchase any Star Wars set. Um, but, but again, I can appreciate the design that's gone into that, that set. I think, you know, like I said, is that it's a beautiful-looking set. Um. And, again, I think it's going to be interesting to see how the fans go with the whole uh, lightsaber thing as well. So that's going to be interesting too. I think, right, I think I've done everything that I need to do. <laughs> okay. Getting there. Not, not too many parts to go.
Okay. That very clearly goes there. Something, <laughs> something has gone completely astray here. Oh, no, there needs to be, does there need to be a little one? I think they need to be a little one. Does that? Oh, yes, it does. Does, is it? Okay, right, yeah, okay. I have, I've gone, I've gone rogue again, gang. <laughs> Sorry about just leaving you to sit there and <laughs> listen to me mutter to myself in silence. That's not very good viewing, is it? Oh dear. Right, I'm getting there, I've got it. But I did warn you that it was getting late and I'm getting muddled. <laughs> so <laughs> there we go, now I've got it. Right, now I've just got to replicate that on this side. I can't believe that I looked at those instructions and I messed up twice while looking at those instructions. Need the time, I, I didn't do the right thing on either of those so I, but anyway, the brilliance of Lego is that you can just sort of take it apart and put it back together again with how it's meant to be built. So that's a blessing for me tonight. Right. Excellent. Oh, I'm glad that your live stream went well. That's good. I think that's what quite a few people have said, isn't it, that they don't know why there haven't been lightsabers before. So that's sort of interesting in and of itself too, which I'm just following on from Brickish's comment. I know. I um, And then uh, Lithuania Bricks also popped into Brett's stream yesterday and he has actually been building lightsabers for quite a while. And so he was sort of like going, I don't know what that's going to mean for, you know, his builds because that's been his like little passion project has been, you know, being able to build lightsabers. So I think that he was a little bit sort of disappointed. Um, that that's sort of something that Lego has decided to sort of take on which is fine, obviously. That's Lego's choice to do what Lego wants to do. But yeah, it's interesting. I think in the same way that <laughs> when I when I made my Lego Aladdin minifigure in the same way that Paul Claire from Brick Emotion made her Tiana figure, and then Lego finally releases the official version, I think that that's probably a little bit what Brick. Uh, Lithuania bricks sort of felt. <laughs> so I did empathise with him. Um, a piece, I don't, close to the entrance by the boathouse stairs? I don't, I don't know, man. <laughs> but I'll have to check. I'll have to check that. Oh, yeah, Tayshon, yeah, definitely sub to Brett. He's got some amazing trains and his city's looking really fantastic. We were actually talking to um, about Brett City earlier as well. So Brett may be getting creative with how he includes or doesn't include trains in his city in the future. So it's definitely worth subscribing and keeping an eye on what Brett comes up with with his city. It's an awesome looking a little city at the moment, especially if you are a train enthusiast. So well worth it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so nice, it would be nice if Lego also bought out a set where you can build your own lightsaber. 
yeah, like a tailor-made one, do you mean? I think the other thing that's going to be interesting with the lightsabers is it will depend on whose who's lightsaber you want. You know, I probably, the only lightsaber that I'd be interested in getting would probably be the purple one. And that's because I do like Samuel L. Jackson as an actor and I do like purple. <laughs> so, but... Again, it would also depend on how much time, energy, effort and money I would have to put into getting said lightsaber. So I don't know <laughs> whether or not that's ever going to sort of be that much of a, of a thing for me. Oh, it was a, a <laughs> loose piece or it was just a trick of the light. Okay. Well, it, it may not be. It might just be me being being bonkers <laughs> let's it's much more likely that I I don't know what's going on in the courtyard at all and I will find a rogue piece that has ended up in there tomorrow when I have another look at this set so yeah I'm glad that your um your stream last week went well Tayshawn it's you know it's really good um to be able to check out what people are doing and be able to talk to different different people, um, you know, live, even if it's m me just speaking and you guys typing, it's still really nice to have that sort of interaction and that engagement. I um yeah, I've really like. I mean, as I was saying earlier, I've really enjoyed doing live stream, so I can't wait to be able to get on and do some more. No. Okay. <laughs> I'm getting muddled again, guys. <laughs> right. Okay, not very many parts to go, though. All good. And Pucky snoring. He's so cute. Oh my gosh. Um, oh, it will depend. Yes, I will definitely do that for Diagon Alley. I wasn't sure whether or not you wanted it for this one. Um, but I will definitely do that when when Diagon Alley arrives. Um, at one stage, I wasn't actually sure whether or not I would be getting my Diagon Alley before you, <laughs> so which still might happen, since it can be quite slow with post in Australia at the moment. So we'll see. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing, Brett. <laughs> I love that, the train guy. Yes, you do do trains. That's definitely a passion of yours, but also space. <laughs> Harry Potter, city, castle, <laughs> too much Lego. That's like me. I sort of go, yes, I do do friends, but I also do princesses and I also <laughs> do Harry Potter and the hidden side and Avengers. <laughs> So not all of that goes up on YouTube though, because I don't I don't have enough time to film and edit. So the final few pieces into the castle roof. So we're not doing too bad. Um, and then we'll wrap it up once these are all in. And like I said, next week I'll be streaming again at the same time and we'll probably do a friend's um, stream next week since that's what a lot of us like and I'll probably do the swimming pools that I was meant to do this week and then possibly the week after we might go back to Harry Potter so depending on how far I've gotten with this build in the meantime or and or whether or not Diagon Alley has arrived is that that's what we'll try and do um so yeah we'll see <laughs> Oh, really? End of January? Oh, yeah. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> okay. 
It possibly won't take until the end of January, but I've got no no guarantees at the moment with how slow shipping has been in Australia. Right. Oh, I've gone skiffy back here. Alrighty, gang. So there we go. So we are now up to. So that's the end of bag 13. So we're now up to bag 14. It will be up next. But obviously we've got all the rock work down here done, filters offices done, the windows are in, most of the roof is in. We've got the courtyard, which is mostly sort of sorted. Hopefully we might get a few more details in here. This bit looks a bit plain, but, you know, let's not have any judgments. We'll just check what's going on in the courtyard. Doesn't seem to be any rogue pieces going on there at the moment. But we'll see. Then we've got this little area here, which obviously all of this will sort of end up getting fixed up. Maybe the clock tower or something will be going above that bit, perhaps. Who knows? And then obviously the most... Most of what we've been doing today has been in the Great Hall. So you can see back here the stained glass, which looks really pretty. So that's going to, oh, tiny trees on the rocks. Excellent. Yes, that would be really good. So, yeah, and then there's a few other light little bits as well. And then obviously the basculus down here, Chamber of Secrets. And this then, and then this end as well. Um, the the little bit of the thing that's funny about this end, though, is that it's got bricks behind it, so we don't really get the same visual impact of the stained glass as like this side, where we actually get like the reflection. And mm -hmm. definitely, oh hi, Raps, how are you going? <laughs> That's okay, Raps. We are just about to wrap up, though, because I've been streaming for over three hours. <laughs> so, yeah, and I definitely agree with you, Brickish, as well, is that this is one of the sets that would just be absolutely fantastic to have a light kit added to it as well. So, yeah, that would be amazing. So, yeah, that's where we're up to, and we are sort of halfway through book two as well so there's four books so yeah that's that's where we're up to with this build so I really hope that yeah just over three hours Tayshon <laughs> I can talk <laughs> oh dear oh yes we'll see we'll see how we go with Umbra she's a nasty piece of work so yes <laughs> Yeah, three hours. It's been a bit of a a bit of a long one, but it's enjoyable. You guys keep me entertained and we chat away nicely with everyone, so that's really cool. Um, but we still haven't got any more mini fix, so we're still just with Godric. No one else yet. So we'll have to see where we where we pick up the other three founders of Hogwarts as well as we progress. But, yeah, that's where we're up to for now. I hope you guys end up having fantastic weekends. So, yeah, definitely I'll be keeping an eye out and seeing if anyone's streaming or doing any videos. So I'll try and, you know, jump in and say hello to those and give them a like, which would be fantastic. Um, and hopefully I'll get to see most of you next week. And like I said, I should try and get my next city update up hopefully early in the week as well maybe monday or tuesday i'll try and post that as well depending on when i can get to the other place to take the photos for a thumbnail for my outro but there's exciting stuff happening in my city so that should be good so yeah <laughs> that's not silly raps i've been saying all sorts of strange things tonight so <laughs> That's all good. Yes, Brickish, you don't want to know who Umbridge is, but she definitely deserves to get thrown down the mountain. <laughs>
That's fine, Corda. It was great to have you here, my darling, darling son, and I hope that you've had fun. So, yes, thanks so much for stopping by as well, Brett. It's always nice to, to get to chat to you, mate. So, yes, let's wrap things up now. Um, and, yeah, enjoy your weekends. Have fantastic weeks as well. I hope that you all have a really lovely time and you take care of yourselves. And, um, yeah, I'll, I'll say hello to you, obviously, when I post my video in the chat down below as well. Um, and I will try and get my 400 subs video up soon as well, hopefully in the next week or so, depending on work. And, yeah, if not, I'll see you here next week for our swimming pool video. So I hope you have a wonderful week, guys. Take care. Bye. Bye.